in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed you know right from the time listen right from the time we received this song this song has been a chord for me in the spirit there's something about receiving specific songs for seasons there are many songs by the grace of god that we have received in this place but there's just a strange anointing upon this song it's, it's like a call and response it compels something within you to respond to the heavens I've tried and tried to stop singing this song, but it will not leave. It's a chant in the spirit. It does something to my spirit. It does something to my spirit. Yeah. 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 Help us worship team. time all the instruments our voices and our hands lifted yeah. Help me worship team. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy. Just the voices. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah.
turn it into a prayer tonight and cry for a visitation. Lord, I have come to feast at your table. I have come to feast at your table. We have come to draw strength tonight. Strength for the journey ahead. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we ask you tonight, invade our lives. Do something remarkable in our lives tonight. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Good evening, everyone. Your life will never be the same. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I welcome everyone once again. We have a lot to do tonight. And we're trusting God to be able to go so far. Every moment in his presence. Let me tell you one of the reasons why the presence of God should be greatly desired. In his presence, there is not only liberty. In his presence, there is wisdom. In his presence, there is understanding. It's in his presence he reveals to us the mystery behind the happenings in our lives. And he shows us the system. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Apologize for that. Praise the Lord. Tonight's teaching is going to bless us in no small way. I like our hearts to really, really be opened. The Lord wants to speak to us by the power of his spirit. Hallelujah. The Lord put something in my spirit that I'd like us to write down that I think will be very important and it will set the pace tonight. Um, there are so many people outside. As we always say, you are part of us. And um, I know that the Lord brought you to bless you. And do not let distance distract you. I see people standing with something to write. I want you to know we really appreciate the sacrifice. And um, this that you are doing will speak in your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, when God gave man the mandate to dominate the word dominion means sovereign control sovereign control and every religion every movement promises one thing dominion the fear of man has been his inability to completely control certain situations and circumstances please i want you to listen the things we cannot control are the things that bring fear to our lives so people fear poverty for instance because of um, an effect it seems to be able to bring to our lives and we cannot do anything about it we fear death we fear guns because we think they can do something to us we fear failure because it does something to us. Every time man is unable to control a process, it brings fear, it brings a sense of subjugation. So every movement that has come through history and civilization promises to lead man to a pathway where we'll be able to access dominion. 
but we know that there is no true dominion and authority outside of christ in genesis 1 26 the bible says and elohim said let us make man in our own image it says let them have sovereign control dominion hallelujah what what is happening to you here every time is the process that will bring you into true dominion i told us again and again that dominion is not a wish dominion is not an impartation dominion is a reaction something happens to your life that leads to an end called dominion hallelujah write this down something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life write this down something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life something i do not know is responsible i said for you to write it this way so that every time you are reading it you can personalize it and it can create the effect that will birth change something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life the second thing i want you to write is this something i am aware of but have not believed is also responsible for my limitation something i am aware of but have not believed is responsible for my limitation there is something i am aware of there is an information a revelation i am aware of i'm not ignorant of it i'm aware of it but my refusal to believe it has brought limitation to my life number three something i have believed but have not consistently acted upon is also responsible for my limitation something i have believed but have not consistently acted upon underline consistently acted upon something i have believed but have not consistently acted upon is also responsible for my limitation These three factors have limited us in no small way. Something we do not know is responsible for the limitations in our lives. Two, something we know and information we have come across but we have not chosen to believe is also responsible for the limitations in our lives. Number three, something we have believed but have not consistently it may be that you have acted upon it but you have not consistently acted upon see the danger is that any of these three categories will produce the same result see how frustrating it is are we together now so we have three people here one who is completely ignorant and he's not even aware he's ignorant his miracle starts when he's aware that he's ignorant. Not even when the solution comes. The awareness that you need help is already deliverance in itself. Let me tell you how Satan destroys people. He keeps you in ignorance. Are we together now? And he closes every door that can even make you aware you are ignorant. That's the first person. His end is predictable. Number two is the one who is... He's not ignorant. He's had access to the information that can change him or her. But the person has refused to believe. You see, I found out that it's not what you hear that changes you. It's what you choose to believe and live by. So this person here has all the information, has read all the books, has gone for all the seminars, comes for koinonia every week, and you will think that he would produce certain kinds of results right the third person not only is not ignorant not only has believed but has refused to consistently act 
Now, the terrible thing is, you would think the first two should be better than the first person, but their results will all come out the same. Hallelujah. That's why the interesting thing about God is when you start working with him, you have to go all the way to see your progress. You can't take two steps with God and expect you will see any remarkable progress. You've, had, you, you've got to go all the way and then you'll see that there is progress. Tonight, I want to teach on strategic kingdom influence. Strategic kingdom influence. This teaching will bless you. It will change your life. Strategic kingdom influence. I want to teach us a major tool for kingdom advancement in the 21st century. Strategic kingdom influence. One of the, please look up, especially those of us who are pastors, ministries, fellowships, and groups. I think I was, uh, I don't know if it was the School of Ministry students we were having a discussion yesterday. And I was telling them, a true shepherd, listen, please. A true shepherd must build people intentionally. There's no lecturer who comes to the lecture hall guessing what he thinks the students should become are we together every like the students don't even know what they should become many times a few may know but the lecturer is only a lecturer because he is privy to an information he knows what the students should become if they diligently stay under his tutelage when jesus came he knew what he wanted the disciples to become he wanted them to become apostles envoys advocates of his ideology and he knew exactly what to do it's a terrible thing when a pastor is confused about the path of spiritual progress of the members meaning that he doesn't really know what builds the people he's hoping and sadly i say this and i'm challenging especially those of us who are men of god you don't sit down and just guess what to teach people on saturday night or Sunday early in the morning, you just think and say, what have I not talked about character? People are misbehaving in my church. You now run a hammer on character and then you find out that uh, people need to learn on miracles. And then you go and teach on miracles. Your growth will not be constructive. Every pastor ought to develop people in five areas. Number one, their spiritual lives. These are just... Um, additions that i think i should communicate before we go into our discussion tonight number one our spiritual life any pastor any leader that cannot guide the people god has committed to him to really know god to come to a point where they can hear the voice of god to come to a point where they conform to the image of the christ to come to a point where the average member is passionate about the things of the kingdom no matter what else you teach people if you don't bring them to a point of addiction and love and passion for god then they are not growing hallelujah yes where they seek his face where they love him genuinely not where they use him where they love him so that's the first area and that involves them being born again not just being healed they have to be saved pastors make sure the congregation of the people you are leading among other things and before other things their salvation is secured i don't care what else happened in that church if the people are not saved they are not growing praise the lord they must be saved and established in righteousness where your members become people of conviction let me tell you something i have seen congregations where the level of revelation that comes from the preacher to them is very low but i respect those congregations because the little the man of god knows he has brought his members to a point of conviction i'm irritated by an assembly that does not have values spiritual convictions it's better to be wrong about something so that even when you change you know what you left not that you are there today you think divine healing is scriptural tomorrow you are not sure today you think prosperity is good and then your man of god comes and him too he's not sure 
There are times you see pastors oscillating. You go for a conference and hear something and you come back. Ship it to your congregation and teach them. Only for you to grow two weeks later and find out that you wouldn't have brought that revelation that way. And then the members are hearing a lot of things, but they are not growing. Hallelujah. Number two, every true shepherd must be able to build people's finances. I'm absolutely convinced that a man of God who does not pay attention to the financial well-being of his congregation is not only a wicked man of God. He's not only a wicked man of God, but he's a dangerous man of God. You know why? Because the Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. If you want to get the heart of a congregation focused towards God, there are certain things in their lives that can really become distractions. There is no how you want a man to serve God, lie down, you want him to give you three or four or five hours of his life, whereas he knows that his rent is due. Are we together now? And then it is also wicked honestly this is my proposition i think it is really wicked for a man of god to stand up and then say oh how many people are going to give one one million naira i was telling the school of ministry students and then you have people come out and then they are they are they are offering now i don't care whether the church is using their offering or not these people give offerings every week even if it's five naira it left them is that true they pay their time And then the minister of the gospel in turn is not empowering them. And so they are broke, they are failures in their offices. They are at the lower levels. They can't do nothing. They don't have options. They've not grown to a point where they can be able to say, look, I, can, I want to go to church. Somebody cover for me. No influence. Sometimes... We, we teach what we call a replacement theology where we can use one dimension of the kingdom to replace the need for another. It doesn't exist. It's error. And a man of God can be so bold in error and mislead people. Many pastors who don't pay attention to the finances of their members are doing well themselves. They are doing well because they are offering spiritual value and the members sow into their lives. The members maybe pay their rent some of the pastors collect salary so i can teach you all kinds of things and immediately after the service my dinner is secured i'm going to go and eat but will you eat a good shepherd does not march on his sheep he lays down his life for his sheep you see this is why many congregations are um, is a beehive of frustrated people there are issues people have that will not allow them to grow number three every true shepherd should teach people and guide them along the area of excellence in leadership how to excel career wise how to excel family wise Every church, every congregation is a unit of family. You cannot have an irresponsible father, a very wicked mother, come to a church. What do you think that bad father will become as a HOD? He will translate his understanding about fatherhood. And that's what he's going to use to lead the department. Are we together now? Every arm robber came from somewhere. He didn't fall from a tree. Are we together? Every prostitute or harlot came from somewhere. All those who are making a mess of society came from family. And a platform like this, the church is an institution that influences the mindset of people. Gives them very, very scriptural perspectives on leadership. How do you excel in your place of work? It matters to God. How do you excel in your endeavor? It matters to God. How do you excel in your business? How do you do it right? Number what now? Number four. 
every pastor must teach his congregation on principles of relationships relationships are everything in this kingdom your breakthrough comes through relationships the tragedy in your life comes through relationships jesus understood this he didn't he didn't play with relationships we lose opportunities because we do not know how to master relationships we lose destiny help us money is not everything as important as it is one ability to maximize a quality relationship will give you what one billion will not give you relationships hallelujah number five every pastor must be able to teach his congregation how to be agents of national transformation every pastor must be able to teach his member life applicable teachings teachings they can take outside of the confines of the church back to society and begin to shape cultures and change systems with it listen let me tell you the churches that command influence in every territory are the churches whose impact are felt even sociologically it's not just by buying rice or giving people sewing machine or or you know uh, buying pot or killing cow those things are important but it's not just about doing things it's about institutionalizing a mindset within a territory so the church becomes noted everybody within that territory benefits there are so many people benefiting from koinonia the national union of road transport workers are benefiting rental services benefiting mtn glow airtel benefiting are we together now there are many people who may not be christians but will fight to protect the continuity of koinonia because they can see how it translates to the well-being of their own lives so you build people intentionally you don't just sit down and say i got up and i think i feel like saying this today and then people jump and then at the end of the service you ask the people what did you gain and the person tells you honestly me too i don't know but my my spirit picked something you are not going to grow that way i assure you did you know did you know that i've taught us here it's not your intention that becomes your reality but your conviction you want to be great but something about your belief will limit you you want to be greatly anointed but there is something you must know i'm telling you you will thank me in the years to come for these fruits in the name of jesus christ i'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do I need you more and more I'm chasing after you No matter what I have to do I need you more and more More and more More and more when you grow spiritually and otherwise it becomes there is something there is a name god gives this kind of people he calls them a delightsome land you know what it is like a delightsome a likable personality something about your transition in the spirit creates an effect in this realm and so you are well desired well desired I was telling the school of ministry um, students yesterday that the project this project you see called koinonia the benefit of koinonia 
will be experienced in the next 10 to 20 years not now hallelujah my target is people from ages 0 to 45 outside 45 you can join but the target that that generation of individuals is what we want to target in the next 20 years many people you see now 70 years etc in business in politics no matter how they want to hold on to power many of them would have transited it will now be our turn hallelujah so it's a project just like satan destroyed america when god's generals were there preaching what was he doing to, they forgot about their children and the devil just targeted them from 25 years they were there in the crusade and the children were they left the children and the wives at home because they felt those people did not need change so the men of god were preaching and the devil said i, I give up on these ones but he started growing with them channel o came mtv came right all kinds of things came they grew they didn't train them they grew they shaped their ideology they are the ones today who are the leaders prime ministers heads of banks heads of institutions and so a system runs i mean they play the world like a chess but it's going to change i know we don't look like it yet i assure you you quote me i've been saying certain things that i'll keep saying we will all be great and the best part is that we will know ourselves that's what will happen don't trivialize the power of the holy spirit just give him time he will surprise you give him time write this word down let's begin our teaching strategic kingdom influence um let's define influence very quickly i have a lot to talk about and i want us to finish very fast amen and amen and amen influence what is influence the capacity to have an effect influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character development and behavior of something or someone please make sure you are writing the capacity to have an effect on the character development and behavior of something or someone is called influence when you sustain an ability to create an effect in somebody's behavior somebody's character and his development we call that influence number two influence is the ability and the platform to change mindsets comma influence is the ability and the platform to change mindsets comma shape opinions and move others to act in a certain way change mindsets so the ability and the platform to be able to change mindsets shape opinions and move others to act in a certain way is called influence how we need this one of the keys to kingdom advance in the 21st century is not just evangelism it's called influence and i add kingdom influence we have a mandate as a church listen listen we are not just here roaming around wondering what to do with our lives there is a mandate upon us that mandate is found in genesis 1 26 help us media genesis 1 26 matthew 6 verse 10 and mark 16 15 and 16. genesis 1 26 matthew 6 verse 10 mark 16 15 and 16. It reveals our mandate as the church every one of you under the sound of my voice is part of those to make this mandate come to pass and God said Genesis 1 26 let us make man after our image our likeness and let them have sovereign control dominion 
sovereign control the power of legislature the ability to extend an influence over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air the cattle and over all the earth over every creeping thing and everything that creeps upon the earth we are god's managers the state of the earth today is a revelation of our failure our inability to manage this domain of God's kingdom. We have a mandate as a church. Matthew 6 verse 10. Everyone read. Jesus was teaching this in what we have believed to be the Lord's prayer. One to read. Thy kingdom come. How? By your will being done in earth exactly as it is in heaven listen heaven is the way it is for two reasons one the presence of god two a culture a culture a culture there is a culture that makes heaven heaven and god is saying when you when we pray this is god's desire that his kingdom his sovereign rule will find expression in this our sphere in the exact way in other words reproduce the culture of heaven in your environment it's a mandate and then he further expands on how to do it mark chapter 16 mark 16 15 to 16 are you there media please help us you're giving us mark 10 you have to correct it please Mark 16, 15, okay. And he said unto them, read on please, one to read. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Hold on. The first assignment is go. That means he expects a body that is moving. Action. Go. Then he tells you the strategy. He says he didn't say go around the street he says go into enter a system called cosmos don't just go around thank god for sharing tracks and all of that but he gives you an idea his system of invasion i want you to enter a strata of human activities and when you are establishing that strata he said preach the gospel not to every human being not to every human being to every creature creature everything alive should feel the impact of the gospel communicate that influence and that ideology write this down our mandate as a church not koinonia i mean the global church the ecclesia our mandate as the church is to establish the lordship of christ i will keep drumming this till we get it again and again establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men that's the first dimension to establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men and the instrument we use to produce this is called the gospel the gospel the gospel is not just a message the gospel is an instrument the end of it is to establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men number two to extend this is my concern tonight to extend the culture and authority of heaven across every territory and strata of human activity i'll take it again to extend the culture and authority of heaven to extend the culture and the authority of heaven across every territory and strata or sphere of human activity listen if all we do is establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men that's important but we must go the extra mile to make sure that every strata of human activity also come under the influence of the christ look up please let me tell you where our lukewarm attitude came from our lukewarm attitude came from preachers who in an attempt to make us have the perspective of eternity in view have trivialized the necessity of the church today 
are we together now so in a bid to teach us and prepare us for rapture teach us about the second coming of christ etc etc right we we push it to the limit and then we give people an idea like every other thing is a waste every other thing don't don't worry about building no house don't build any business don't do anything is unnecessary just make sure you love god and remain rapturable and we say that to justify and then we find out that after 20 years jesus has not come but your child has come but your bills have come these are the ones that are coming jesus that you are preparing for is coming that's true but he has not come but your bills have arrived right the need for um your responsibility has arrived we have to be careful the way we teach people things many of us are well-meaning people but we are victims of an ideology that must be balanced i'm always obsessed with balance of course we have the other side of the equation people who are so careless about the things of god they are just carnal all they want is cars houses oh this and that and that they are, they are so carnal those kinds of people will go to hell when jesus comes because they are obviously not living with eternity in view but there is a balance everyone say there is a balance there is a balance so we have an assignment to extend the culture when promise was you know talking to us i'm sure some of you were shocked looking at him you cannot imagine that a gentleman like this was keeping dreadlocks and wearing earrings all around when he came to zaria you think he just wanted to wear it he was reacting to something within him somebody told him that appearance or that state was equal to manhood and masculinity and so he was a victim of his mindset what happened to him not just deliverance but what happened to him was a translation another idea an alternative structure came upon his life see you don't change people by just flogging them insulting them castigating them or telling them do this when you tell somebody do this the person will not do it he's reacting to something within him if you don't change that's why they bring people out of prison and they say make sure you don't steal again and you see the person standing they say sign here and he's signing one month later they say ah they say honestly this time around this and that and that because they they don't create programs that influence the minds of the people you cast away that spirit and change their paradigm and then you win them amen let me discuss our mandate and the 21st century i really want this to be relevant to us the mandate of the church i think one of the confusion in the church right now is how to be able to weave kingdom living and the reality of our changing society whether you believe it or not times are changing say times are changing the only constant thing in life is change the 21st century has brought in a lot of changes a lot of changes changes in the way even some of us who are young met certain things that we can even relate to and say ah things have changed we're not so old like that but at least we can look back and be able to say yesterday there was xyz today is, is now obsolete not to talk of our parents and our fathers and mothers here they can tell you a lot of things we have no idea some of our little ones here don't know what a typewriter looks like some of them when they grow i'm sure they will not even know what a stove looks like i'm sure by the time they are adults will be using e-cookers <laughs> oh don't limit the mind of man believe me who knew that somebody will create something as as much as i mean hundreds of tons and then lift it up in the air just like that even you you can't hang in the air yet plane that is heavier than you can rise up in the air so don't don't trivialize the power of the mind cultures have changed the interests of people have changed 
perspectives have changed technology has changed a lot of things technology has changed our appetites the world right now is only hours away from anywhere anywhere hours away i'm sure that in the in the next future or in the next uh, maybe five ten years i'm sure you may not have to dial numbers to call them again they will program them to work with your mind i just think of nas and his phone beeps it can happen i mean there's artificial intelligence in phones phones can feel phones can record they can have memories So the 21st century is here and what is the attitude as far as our mandate is concerned because the old ways of doing things even as far as kingdom advancement will no longer be effective i think it was school of ministry again i was telling them did you know that right now you can stand near an influential man's daughter attempting to preach to her they can just snap you and in five minutes, the police are coming to catch you and they'll say you are harassing her. Are we together now? You are harassing her. So the world, the world is, is gradually strangling the opportunities, the access points we have to reach people. And we must be able to reinvent ourselves by the Spirit of God. To adjust to the change and yet be effective in communicating our mandate. Is God blessing us? one of the tragic things about the metamorphosis of the church with respect to the current change is that most of the change that is being effected in the church is not effected with the authority and the supervision of the holy spirit let me tell you what happens when you try to adjust to the 21st century outside of the holy spirit you will become something else completely something else there are pastors under pressure to turn their churches to align to the 21st century please listen to me there are businessmen there are there are entrepreneurs there are all kinds of people families the the paradigm of fatherhood parenting leadership is being compelled to change to adjust to 21st century living but you see a believer is not just one who is born again a believer is one who has submitted to the governing authority of the kingdom and that your change must be with the holy spirit supervision so that he can tell you which attributes are timeless that will not change and which ones are flexible enough not everything in the christian life is permitted to change there are timeless things there are components of the believer's life that must remain constant and i'll tell you where we get this teaching from first corinthians 9 22 please I need to balance this teaching is god blessing us already first corinthians 9 22 this is the bible stand that many contemporary preachers sadly have picked in and we have brought it to seemingly be a strategy now i believe in metamorphosis i'm teaching you change now but that that change must be guided by the wisdom of the holy spirit everyone read this is paul writing to the corinthian church one to read to the weak became as i as weak that i may gain the weak are we together read on i am made all things to all men that i might by all means save some now paul is saying something interesting here let me translate this for you paul is saying i can become anything to anybody this is a nice verse for satan to take advantage of meaning become a smoker to smokers are we together become a prostitute to prostitutes to win them that's not what the bible is saying but that's what has happened in many churches in our obsession to metamorphose and become relevant in the 21st century we have been misguided by this scripture and many things that happen there are churches where members vote the sermon for the week that the pastor preaches are we together there are churches where all kinds of things happen now i don't insult these people at least they are serving god but that's that's dangerous we are removing certain ancient landmarks so as i attempt to teach us on that's why i call this strategic kingdom influence not just kingdom influence it must be strategic meaning the holy spirit is involved hallelujah 
the idea listen the idea of paul here is that i am able to make adjustment the idea here is not an idea about leaving your convictions it's an idea of making adjustments the summary of this entire communication is that paul is saying because of the reality of my society i am able to make adjustments listen any church any pastor that cannot adjust should be ready for empty pews i repeat any pastor any businessman any ceo any worker that cannot adjust notice i didn't say leave your convictions adjust means to create allowance for the excesses of people adjust means to create allowance for the limitations of people adjust means to create allowance for the perspectives of people when you become rigid and stringent forget about advancing the kingdom in today's world one of our fathers who has done that most remarkably that is a model for all of us is papa ee adeboe i've studied the redeemed christian church very carefully and what had been the secret of their exponential growth and influence i will tell you the key is this flexibility not compromise there is a difference between compromise and flexibility papa Iya deboe is a man of strong convictions he's very conservative in his approach to christianity alongside his wife but he realized that if i must achieve the mandate of seeing every redeemed church or at least in every two or three houses let there be one redeemed member i must be flexible enough and yet uncompromising the key is to maintain your convictions but give allowance for the conviction of others let them be able to find a place in your vision and so you see that it began to open up different models of redeemed branches and so you can see a redeemed branch that is generally conservative still adhering to the foundational tenets and you can see one that is quite modern in fact very modern you may not know that this is redeemed his job as a man of god is to ensure that the central leadership sustain the foundational um, model and the understanding of redeem this is a winning strategy so you can find redeem in france you can find redeemed in um in in certain places that you would not expect many pastors are unwilling to bend we are stringent on our ideologies and we do not want to create flexibility so the key is that we must be able to make adjustment everybody say adjustment adjustment is one key to strategic kingdom advancement you cannot say i cover my hair i don't i don't believe in wearing trousers for instance or leaving hair. and you say any other person i come across who i see with trousers or hair not covered is a devil i tear the person down you are going to be frustrated at the same time nobody should put pressure on you to influence your convictions unnecessarily you have a right to sustain your convictions but at the same time you must be able to give room are we together now i'm teaching us on our mandate and the 21st century i've gone to minister in several places and um when you go to minister in places you'll be amazed the approach of many people I've gone to ministries that are very conservative very very conservative I've gone to other ministries that are generally charismatic and unorthodox I've gone to ministries that are wild I've gone to ministries that are lawless that one is not charismatism is lawlessness yet in the midst of it I have been able to make adjustment without violating my convictions are we together koinonia runs on certain convictions but part of the reason why god has blessed us is because we have been able to make adjustments are we together now adjustments that can allow people to to come in 
and be able to not necessarily incorporate their ideologies but give them space to know God for themselves and in that knowing God many people begin to adjust not by force but on the strength of the information that is coming to them is God blessing us yeah. you cannot win people you resent you cannot stand and all of a sudden you see a lady with heavy makeup wearing a very tight trouser and all of that and you know you just give this atmosphere of look at this prostitute and this devil you want to kill me and your idea was to come and win her and then you come and stand and oh you are a sinner you see i will not listen to your message no no no, no. it has nothing to do with being angry i will not listen to your message you come to preach to me for 10 minutes you don't even know what my name is you are initiating me into a cult you are misrepresenting the love of christ at the same time i will not come and see you and you say ah uh, you really want to preach christ to me if prove that you love by coming to my house or coming to this I'm, I'm in the club if you really want to win me come and meet me at the club i won't come go to hell are we together there is a balance so that we don't begin to do stupid things there are ladies that have entered relationship you ask them why they say i'm on a coat ah, you are not sss that's 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 too costly you say i entered relationship it's not love or oh, i don't love him ask him i i am passionate about souls you are getting it wrong i'm trying to explain this scripture i become all things to all men does not mean i leave my convictions to turn into everything whether you are wearing jeans or suit you are a christian and being a christian is is exact there's no confusion about it christianity is not buddhism there are exact tenets there are exact foundational convictions write this down We must carefully study the word. Please, let's write. Let's hurry up. We must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance. We must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance. Listen, the key to kingdom advancement is found in the bible timeless secrets that can advance the kingdom through any culture any kind of civilization and when we study the bible we will find therein secrets that can survive any kind of sociological metamorphosis it doesn't matter what dispensation the truths there remain timeless keys to kingdom influence let's discuss now keys to kingdom influence ask and now give the nations to you O oh lord that's the cry of my heart distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us sing it one more time ask and i'll give the nations to you oh lord that's the cry of my heart Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Keys to kingdom influence. Listen, I've told us that the key to strategic kingdom advancement is called influence. 
the new kind of evangelism that will break through any protocol and any hardness is called influence evangelism the advocacy that comes when a man can gain a platform and is able to influence the convictions of people never trivialize influence and its effect to a person a territory a people and a civilization at every point in your life you are being influenced by somebody and you are influencing somebody keys are very important in the kingdom you hear jesus speak again about keys and i will give you the keys of the kingdom the keys of the kingdom are the mysteries the laws and the principles that give us access the keys of the kingdom are the mysteries the laws the principles that give us access there are keys to kingdom influence and in the name of the lord jesus christ i'm praying that as i begin to teach this as you embrace it you will step into a level of influence that will surprise you the lord spoke to us and said this is a year of multiplied grace and influence he expects us to do more and he's guiding us on how to get there number one the first key to strategic kingdom influence is to have a pace setting trailblazing global mentality write it the way i said it don't write your idea pace setting comma i took time to write it this way it's supposed to create an effect don't scatter it pace setting comma trailblazing comma global mentality write it and look at me let's cane out certain mediocrities in our mind we're on our way to better days we're on our way to better days mm. we're on our way to better days hold on pace setting trailblazing global mentality see we many of us are still growing and we're still coming into the comprehension of how low and depraved our thinking and our ideology is as marketed to us by our institutions as marketed to us by our upbringing as marketed to us by our christian advocates our pastors we are largely victims of the thinking of a man who have sat under for many years our approach the approach of the average christian is not global the approach of the average christian is not pace setting we are comfortable with mediocrity yet we want to command influence a music artist no global mentality no pace setting mentality so we are comfortable borrowing anything from anywhere not yielding to the spirit of creativity that will launch us into unimaginable feats there are many of us seated here who can do so much for god but our mindsets are small i have challenged the leaders again and again koinonia is an apostolic ministry this is only an, a local platform for us to meet together but the approach is global the approach is, is way beyond Nigeria and Africa. You see, we must be able to excel. Let's look at a few scriptures. Matthew 5, 14. Then Deuteronomy 6, 2 to 3. Media, you have to help us. We really have to be fast. Jesus said this, Matthew 5, 14. Write it down and please look up. One, two, read. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. The second statement explains the first line. It says you are the light of the world. Then it compares you. It says you are a city. In other words, can a city that is set on a hill be hidden? 
global approach to life we start up businesses with no idea of global approach the average business in nigeria if it lasts 10 years is a miracle 15 years is a wonder we don't think far right the average church do you know how many churches start in january and by december they are dead because the way the pastor started and was running you would think rapture will happen tomorrow and he runs no no sense of leadership no pace setter trailblazer mentality we come into a system and do the exact same thing listen listen there is a difference between a manager and a leader a manager maintains status quo a leader breaks new frontiers a true apostolic spirit is a groundbreaking spirit you cannot be under a ministry like this and then your thinking is still old Daniel 6, verse 2 to 3. Pace setting mentality. Hallelujah. This was the story of Daniel. Look up, please. Let's see the kind of mindset Daniel had. It's not just that he was called Daniel, he reigned over certain provinces. The Bible says, and over these three presidents. Sorry, I'm cutting from verse 1 of whom daniel was what please read it of whom daniel was first means a pace setter first means a leader surpassing ordinary standards he said that the princes might give accounts to them and the kings should have no damage verse 3 then this daniel was what everybody say pace setters this daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes why because an excellent spirit was it because he was a christian because he possessed certain things that made him irresistible and the king thought to set him over what influence as a result of a pace setting mentality how many Christians start their work and never dream of becoming the managers or the people at the highest echelons? They don't care. In fact, they run away. When they tell them they are considering you for promotion, they say, ah, but for what now? How about God? Is it that you don't know what? It's a demonic mentality. Whoever taught you that, is, it, it may be a sincere person, but that's a doctrine of demons that keeps the church bad. I love Jesus. When Jesus showed up, he broke status quo. Genesis 41, give us 33, then we move to 38 to 44, please, very fast. Sorry, we have to read these things because I want to press something in tonight. Genesis 41, give us verse 33, then we move to 38 down to 44. Now look up, please, everyone. This was the story of Joseph. Now, therefore, this is Joseph, advising pharaoh now therefore look out for a man discreet and wise whoever qualifies whoever has that mentality give him this kind of influence set him over the land of egypt there is influence for the taking but there is a requirement who is that one man in egypt who has sustained a paradigm of thinking that can produce this result give us verse 38 hear what the king says in response and Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find ay, 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 ay. may that be your testimony? Amen. That even your enemies will sit together and say, Let's tell ourselves the truth. Can we find a trailblazer? That when the government wants to sow a seed as a government to a church, they turn and say, Which which church is making impact that is consistent with the values of the government? Can we find such a one as this is? A man of whom the Spirit of God is. We are reading down to 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Listen, for as much as God has showed thee this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. 
Watch how cheap influence becomes. Thou shalt do what? I give you influence instantly. Thou shalt be over my house. I hope you know Pharaoh knew that Joseph was not an Egyptian. There are certain levels of mentality you have that will veto your background. All this issue of we don't accept people from this state. They've not found an exceptional person. That's why. That's when you see them breaking the rule. They will say this is the first time we're doing it. Say that's the, I'm, a, I'm a first timer. I have, I have the spirit of breaking new grounds. Thou shalt be over my house. And according to my word shall all thy word shall all the people be ruled can you imagine that's a costly that's a risk from pharaoh it says only in the throne will i be greater than thou and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over how many all the land of egypt do you think that's good for the kingdom do you think Joseph's father and brothers would have been allowed to come to Egypt if he didn't have influence. Are we together now? Can you see the advantages of his influence? His influence afforded him to say, where is my father? The same way when you have influence, you can look at somebody and say, you said you are looking for a job, please come. I know you. Your being in Koinonia has qualified you. Even if you don't know anything, I know you love God and you can listen. We have preached people. We have, we have destroyed opportunities for the church to rise. Because of mentalities that we think are good. The church is almost an endangered species compared to the world's global brand in terms of advancement. We are there smiling, throwing ourselves under the anointing and then the world is, is gaining, is squeezing the church into a mold. And one policy can just write us away. And Pharaoh took off his ring, a symbol of royalty, from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck, 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. The last verse. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land. Shout influence. influence. Say it again. Influence. In our families, there's nobody to speak for us. When we are suffering, we just call on God directly. And God wants to answer, but there is no envoy, no human being that can partner with God to wipe our tears do you know it's a cause to have generations of people with no influential person in that family you hear people here say i'm the first person to go to school i'm the first person to get a job you know the danger every other person surrounds you like worms drawing from you you are earning hundred thousand and there are 22 people waiting and hoping to receive their share of cake from you leadership is the passion to excel when i talk of leadership i don't just mean ruling leadership in terms of excelling the passion to excel at an uncommon level i'm explaining to you what pace setting trailblazing global mentality is in one word is leadership the passion to excel at an uncommon level so as to gain access over that sphere listen the reason why you excel is so that you can rise to the highest level and then be able to gain access. We need men and women who have access. And I tell you, Koinonia, hear me. This is what you are becoming. Are we together now? Oh, this is what you are becoming. Just give us time. In the next few years, in the next few years, you know the way if somebody is walking and he says, 
my name is Nas Dangote, even if he's not related to Dangote, that name has already brought favor to his life. I trust God that Koinonia in the future will be, it, it will be like a, a signet ring of favor. I will never pastor and lead people who are failures. We just comfort ourselves. And no, 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 no. A passion to excel. You are in agriculture. You are thinking, how do I lead? Not Kai. How do I get my small one mudu of beans? Me and my wife. She's not even complaining. You are not pace setting. You are not trailblazing. Remember. That if all you want to do is succeed, you are carnal. But if you want to succeed to gain influence and allow God come into that space, you are an ambassador. Always attach a kingdom motivation to your pursuit. And then there is no level of pursuit that will embarrass you. I will never be small. I hate it. And it is for the kingdom. Number two. The second key to kingdom influence is character. You want to command kingdom influence. In our generation today, you need character. Everybody say character. What is character? Christ-likeness. Moral uprightness. Second Peter chapter 1. From verse 5 to 9 talks to us about sustaining kingdom character just write it down we may not have time to look at it listen brothers and sisters please look at me if you want to be global those outside please pay attention if you want to go far in business in ministry in your career you have to curb a lot of excesses in your life. The Bible says, listen to me. The Bible says, um, all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. All things are permissible, but not all things are necessary. On your journey to influence, there are weights. Some things are not necessarily sinful. They are just weights. Weights. Character. Moral uprightness. From the way you speak, the way you dress, the way you behave. You want to be a leader. You are in a place they are sharing food. Ah, I have not got you. You are just stretching. You are not a leader. God cannot promote you to disgrace him like that. There is a decorum. There is a protocol for great people. I'm not just talking about pretending and, and living a fake and a false life. But you must be disciplined. You are dressing, you iron your clothes. You talk well. You see people, you greet them. You don't see somebody like our daddy here and say, Ah, daddy, how are you, prof? You know, as if you are talking to, to yourself. No. Character. There are many people who do not have character. Moral uprightness. You see an elderly woman moving your mother, something you cannot help her pick up the load. No character. There's this wild nature that our generation of young people have that we must tame and cut away. We, we associate youthfulness to wildness. That means if you are temperate, people think you are too cold. Be wild. You won't be a leader that way. Look at how teachers, the teachers in our school, who teach our students. You see how they dress? You see how they talk? Now, I'm not against anything, but a young man comes, rings in his five hands. I'm not against all of those things, but you are not, it's not seen, but it's a weight. The students are watching you. The next day, they come with it too. You sag your jeans. A teacher, you see jeans with, um, um, uh, what they call it, all kinds of, there's this patch jeans that you see that exposes everywhere. I mean, there's nothing for the imagination. Believe me, if nobody has told you anything is wrong with it, Joshua Selman is saying it, write it, mark me. Something is wrong with that kind of thing. You won't go far with it. 
I'll preach you. Oh. Hallelujah. See, there is a protocol to greatness. You must give up something to go up. You cannot go up with everything you wear with down. It's, it, you are down because a weight held you. If you are ready to move up, be ready to drop some things. Vulgar communications. Don't speak intelligently. Many of us today cannot construct a good letter, a proposal, because our vulgar speaking and communication has destroyed us. You are writing something to apply for a job. You are writing you as you, for as letter four. You see that? I need a job from you. Thanks. And the manager looks at it and says, look at, look at all this nuisance to our company. We have labored to build ourselves and these people are coming to destroy us. See, our generation interprets modesty as weakness. When your life is temperate, you feel guilty for it. Because we live in a generation where you must be loud and wild to be thought of. Those people will not last long. History is full of many of them. Prison cells are full of many of them. They created their own rules to life. Everybody say, I'll be a man of character. Say it, I'll be a man of character or a woman of character. Yes. Every bad wife was a bad human being. Every irresponsible father was an irresponsible human being. Every bad leader was a bad human being. You bring in your personality. You bring in your mindset. It doesn't just change when you become CEO. It's an attitude. Hallelujah. Moral uprightness. You are calm. Not the person moving around, gossiping about everybody, saying everything about everybody. No. Only cheap people do that. Only idle people do that. Hallelujah. There are rules for greatness. You ignore them, you will never be great. The level that God has brought us in ministry by the grace of God. You see all these people inside and outside. I honor God and I bless them. But never make a mistake. They didn't just come just because of the anointing. There are factors combined together. This is what I'm teaching you. See, let me tell you. People never become loyal to you until they probe your life and they are satisfied that you are worth being loyal to. Loyalty is not a gift. You earn it. Are we together? There are so many people who see, especially some of us young people, and they think the loyalty is just because of solidarity. No! Loyalty is a product of a track record. People probe your life and come to a point where they are satisfied with your convictions and they, they, are, they, are, they are comfortable that you are a leader worth submitting to. You don't command influence just because you think you are spiritual. Character. There are many pastors who don't have character. You just get up and go and disturb somebody's house early in the morning. Peace be unto this house. And pastor, so, 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 bam, 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 bam. Madam is there tea. You think it's a nice thing. They are marking you. You represent boredom to them. No character. Are you anointed? Yes. Will you last like that? No. That's how we inconvenience a lot of people. You now meet somebody and prophesy to the person and say, transfer 7,000 or 10,000 to my account. God keeps quiet and you think he was right. He was very wrong. It's just his mercy that overlooked it. There are pastors who do that. The moment they say, I want to pray for you, what they say is, I want money from you. The moment they pray for you, they just say, transfer 2,000 to my account so that he can activate the faith. There is a place for seed faith. But many of the things we do. That's why a young man right now is associated with the moment parents see certain people, even some of us young ministers, you go to pray in somebody's house and they are already suspecting. They are looking at you. You have to talk for five minutes for them to eat, to loosen up and say, oh, this guy, this guy looks very cultured. 
character you get to somebody's house in five minutes you have entered their kitchen they are prime plantain you carry one you eat the world they are watching you there are some of us like this i must talk to you i want you to become something and we must curb these things don't do that say no 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 we are free they always allow me no see let me tell you part of character is the ability to say no to some things that are even good you must see there are certain things that is like Esau you are trading your birthright for it there are times people have carried fat seeds and and checks something to give me and the Holy Spirit will say no 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 because in their minds they are feeling guilty they are not just blessing me out of conviction they just feel tall this man of god has prayed and you see them i'm ready to go and see them pinching themselves giving signs and somebody will enter and they come out and then i tell them i say no 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 no. i receive it i bless it and i sew it back and they say ah man of god can we have your number please honestly you see that you have earned loyalty because you have let them know that you your convictions are greater than money for some of us abba, you collect and count it and say abba madam you too abba what is all this how much is my transport from where I left? I did night vigil, deliverance, the money. You are dropping 10,000, you drop it on the table. There, I say, Madam, add something. Are you fake? No, but you are a suspect. It's easy for people to think you went to collect power. Some of us, the way we dress, now please, um, don't, 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 don't feel bad. I'm, I'm just trying to work on you. I've seen men of God. I'm, please i'm not uh i wish i don't have to preach this boy i have to obey god from your hairstyle the way you look you look like a thief you look like i mean the way you are dressing and even when you are talking people are afraid they are not at ease honestly you may not be you may be the nicest person available but something about your lack of character and environment you tell a lady i want to see you she's shaking because she doesn't even know what can happen no come on I want you to be on a project that you must be trusted be on a project be trustworthy not perfection but you are sincere enough to be trustworthy when people commit their loyalty to you it's a trust you don't disappoint it how many pastors have dashed down the loyalty of people loyalty is a trust brothers and sisters so God is talking to some of us now who are careless with little little things you just sit down and send a text to four or five sisters you make jollof rice for me you my birthday is coming by June I want a suit Sam you buy uh, this and that there are men of God that do that I'm sorry if, if you are in that category forgive me but it's wrong I cannot imagine myself coming now to tell heads of department all of you bring hundred hundred thousand my birthday is coming in June choir you bring bring buy me shoe uh, all the pastors <laughs> Pastor Femi and Alpha and you who have congregation so you people you ah, ah. God didn't send you to be a burden to the people sometimes we do these things sincerely but I'm telling you now there is need for adjustment don't do that see bless the people and let them bless you based on their perception of who they think you are they will surprise you they will surprise you there is nobody who will have a track record of transformation from your life who will not give back to you amen let's go to the next point some of you don't seem to like this point The third key to strategic kingdom influence is excellence. Excellence. What is excellence? The quality of doing things well. The quality of doing things well. Write this down. The difference most times is not what you do but how you do it the difference brothers and sisters 
that makes you a great man of influence most times is not what you do is how you do it while i was babbing this this evening i was talking to my baba and i was just telling him that do you know that there are babbing saloons in abuja that you will pay thousands of naira and the people are not as good as him but you will pay because of how they do it the clipper for babbin is different for cabin is different there is really nothing there it's just packaging but because of that packaging you will pay for it he was telling me that the, i think it was oga jordan he should be here he went to abuja or so and then he went to bab somewhere with his brother and they paid three thousand they gave them wine and chinchin is that what you cannot buy how much is chinchin ten naira how much is this coke this 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 uh, heaven pure heaven wine 250 add it together you paid three thousand and then you watch match but listen it's excellent so you'll be rewarded when you are excellent you name your price you see that What you are doing now, are you excellent in it? Please let me talk to us. I salute, I know many people in Koinonia are engaged actively in all kinds of things. But I want to challenge you, are you excellent? Oh, you make kunu, you think he's small, but are you excellent? Why don't you think of a way of doing it very well? Don't say kunu is not nice. If you make it well, I will buy it. I think someone in the protocol he has um, some popcorn machines on campus and then i told him i said i want to taste your popcorn let me see what and what do you put there and he was telling me what he said all that one is stories bring it let me taste let me know whether you are excellent see let me tell you something the minimum standard in our world today is excellence even if you don't have the finance to grow into it have the mindset first so you have only one clot and that one cloth will make it look as if you are not excellent. You are because already you ha you've had an ideology of excellence. You iron it. You look smart. It's not doing ministry that makes you excel. It's how you do it. It's not preaching that makes you excel. It's how you preach. It's not doing business that makes customers come to you. It's how you do it. It's not doing your job that makes you excel, but how you do it. Exceptional people most times are not necessarily super skilled people. They are just people who have been able to force their value to be recognized. Excellence. Say, I'll be excellent. Say it again, I'll be excellent. Number four. Give me a few minutes here and we'll pray. Open your spirit and your ears right now to what you're about to hear. <clears throat> the fourth key in our day in the 21st century to strategic kingdom advancement is called results. We're on our way to better days. We're on our way to better days. We're on our way to better days. Uncommon results is one of the greatest key, greatest keys to strategic kingdom influence. John 15 verse 8. Listen, I will share with you certain things about results today. That will make you go back to your life and you will insist that i must produce results john 15 verse 8 15 not 5 15 verse 8 okay hearing is my father glorified read on that ye bear fruit much fruit exceptional fruit notable results it says so by so doing you will prove that you have been following me diligently listen brothers and sisters our world today thrives on results 
pace setters influencers are those who command results remember my teaching commanding results i want you to pay attention right now write this down uncommon supernatural result is the end of all argument uncommon supernatural result is the end of all argument creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of god waiting for their manifestation i tell you i feel the anointing of the spirit as i'm talking about this something will happen something must happen to you tonight uncommon result is the end of all arguments write this down results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles limitations and circumstances results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles limitations and circumstances oh hallelujah i'm a believer in the word of god results listen look at me when you produce results in your life it shows certain things that you have authority you have got the keys that commands authority i told you that the fear of man is the inability to control situations and circumstances there are a number of people that were brought here that are sick this night that's 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 a situation that's a circumstance you hear them say circumstances beyond our control and whoever can bring it under control must command influence mark zuckerberg wields tremendous influence because he was able to bring a particular dimension of science under control uncommon supernatural results are a sign that you truly have authority over circumstances part of the reasons why there are so many people inside and outside is because by the grace of god and with all humility to an extent god has been able to grace us to show that we have sustained certain keys to command consistent control and dominion over certain aspects of life i was in kaduna when we ministered and we were in the restaurant together um, with my people we were just trying to eat have a meal before we rush and come back to zaria and while we're there just trying to order a meal a woman looks at me and um ah the woman was looking at me and now i, I started feeling embarrassed i said madam do i know she said you are pastor joshua i said yes I said ah well done sir and i looked i said ah, madam how are we you know i was playing with her little boy and i said where do i know you and the woman just nodded she said she was going to tell me a little story and she said i came for counseling two years ago looking as wretched as anything a single mom with a child no hope for marriage finances crashing everything being destroyed and you prayed for me and you prophesied you told me that they were going to call me back to the job and they would send me to the marketing department and i should go there say man of god that's exactly what happened they sent me to the marketing department and i was i was sad and she did her hand like this i saw a ring she said two months ago i got married even with the child she pointed outside and i saw a clean black e-class she said will you believe that i will be the owner of this brothers and sisters say results one result will end every kind of argument every kind is god speaking to us results pastors produce results produce results you know why our prayer department by the grace of god is like it's like second koinonia it's like midweek service of koinonia for many people because of results they are praying and they are seeing results 
nobody will come and spend two three hours here just like that people are not idiots results by the time your life listen i don't care how much you pray or fast if there is no result you'll be frustrated the end of your work with god is that god ah, you come to a point where you become so full of the anointing of the spirit you can produce some common results fill me up until i overflow i want to run over i want to run over fill me up until i overflow i want to run over i want to run over sing one time fill me up till i overflow i want to run a passion i like you to look at every area of your life and be tired of being barren of results you're a pastor no results no healings no miracles no salvation no transformation and you explain away and say it's because i'm telling the truth people are not coming all those things are flimsy excuses results when a family that is barren comes and there is a miracle that's results there are some results you cannot argue with no no you're a businessman don't worry that people don't believe in you my brother produce results and you will close the mouth of any and everybody even if all you are doing is parking soccer away just produce results let me tell you something it's frustrating to make noise about things you don't have results to show because your results are supposed to be your noise in the school of greatness not your words i can do this i am this and that no i can pray where is the fruit of the prayer i can fast where is the fruit of the fasting i am warded where is it results you want to command influence in our world today you need results you need results this is the apex of this teaching tonight you need results supernatural results write the following things about results results are a product of correct understanding and application of laws and principles results are a product of correct understanding and application of laws and principles let me show you a scripture that would probably really really surprise you give us matthew 14 please let's look at it matthew 14 Matthew 14 we read from verse 23 and um, we read down to the end let's hurry up and when he had sent the multitudes away everybody watch this he went up into a mountain apart to pray and when the evening was come he was there alone rush media just continue but the ship was now in the midst of the sea tossed with waves for the wind was contrary there was a situation those in the ship could not control next verse and in the fourth watch of the night jesus went on to them doing what brothers and sisters the same water the same water was responding differently to jesus the same water you know why because jesus was operating on certain principles 
Are we together now? Next verse. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying it is a spirit. Notable results. And they cried out for fear. There is a kind of result that will not only make people celebrate you, they will be afraid. That one will move beyond the realm. I watch some of you as you are sitting down and the power of God begins to break out. I see everybody looking around and you are just trying to adjust, trying to show like I'm, I'm okay, I'm not afraid. There are certain results that can happen in your life. It will make the heart of men fear. But straightway Jesus spake to them saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. He said, Be not afraid, verse 28. And Peter said unto him, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. 29. Hmm. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the water, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. 30. This is my verse of emphasis. But when he saw the wind boys terrors, he was afraid and began to sing. And he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Look at this. Two people are standing on water. One is sinking. The other one is standing. Was it the water? Never the water. Same Nigeria. Same economy. Same dollar rise. Same everything. Are we together now? Same harshness in ministry. Same being in the north where they say people are persecuted. But then you sustain a mystery. Jesus was standing. And when Peter cried, he lifted Peter and Peter stood just like him. Meaning you can bring people to your experience. Listen. There was something Jesus knew that made that water treat him that way. There is something you do not know that is making your life turn around. Someone is walking through it like this. Life is responding to people in different ways on the strength of the laws they have kept. Please hear me. Correct understanding and application of laws and principles. Number two, results are a product of mastery. 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 Exceptional competence. You have mastered the laws that produce them so thorough that you do it unconsciously. That's the kind of attitude that produces results. Number three, results are a product of diligence. There are many times you keep knocking on the door of destiny until it opens. Sometimes you may knock for many years, but you continue. Diligence and persistence. Is what separates men from boys. Diligence. Number four. And I want you to leave this. Take home this one tonight. Results are a product of the presence of the anointing. Ah, The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. When results become supernatural and consistent, then there's no limit to the influence of the person producing it. When results become notable and consistent, listen, listen, if you produce results for a short time, it will not create the effect. It needs to be consistent. That's why you find out that God can be using a particular man of God or a church. He can continue for many years and then one day, it's like he hits a breaking point in the spirit. In one year, he will step into a dimension of increase. Consistency. Consistency. I was watching a video of Steve's Joe. Late Steve's Joe. Apple founder. 1991. 1991. He was talking to their team of executives. And if you hear that guy's idea, as at 91, everything he was saying they would do, they did. Men who produce results. Brothers and sisters, if you're part of this ministry, you must produce results. Not just receive results, produce results. In every area. Hallelujah. When our sister came up and said she got five points, I laughed. But I was impressed with her. But I'm not impressed enough until we find 20 people in a row. That's notable enough. That's the type we can clap with and smile. 
set your standard so high even when they are clapping for you you are still pressing to move higher if you set your standard too low you will hit it easily that's what mediocrity is setting low standards i like her she said four point something when she hit it she set another one you must set a very high standard there is such a high standard that i put in ministry that's why i don't compete because the standard alone i keep competing against that standard is enough to engage me hallelujah i want to get to a point where i will be so full of the holy ghost so full of the anointing of his spirit i'm telling you you don't have to start praying for people it doesn't matter what you're talking about they will pay to get your presence in a place even if it's just to sit down they know they will never be the same fill me up till i overflow i want to run over i want to run over please fill me up till i overflow i want to run listen let me challenge you everybody here create a system that measures your growth don't mark your script by yourself and score yourself a and organize speech and price for yourself you are a mediocre when you do that challenge your standard don't do small things and rejoice over it let me tell you something the key to mediocrity is finding one person you are better than and settling down because of that as a pastor i'm better than this guy I say, I'm better than this guy. Those kind of people will never be my friends. Those who come around and start telling you who they are better than, no. Because they are the type who will fight anybody that rises. I, I'm not a product of all those kinds of things. There is enough, the assignment, the demand of the assignment is enough. You compete against the standard God has given you. There is a benchmark. Those who are men of God today were ushers in the Bible welfare personnel look at the condition to be in welfare full of the holy ghost welfare to serve food you needed to serve food with the anointing so we are constantly moving thank god for what god is doing through the school of ministry but we are rising thank god for what god is doing through our messages and the media ministry but we are rising the result is too small the result is not yet notable enough i tell you compared to where we are going this is child's play we've not started anything the level of excellence is still at its foundation foundation we have not even done anything that's how you challenge yourself don't sit down with your small business and come back with five thousand and you are laughing and say kai is better than nothing be happy for where you are but never want to remain here oh what do you do i'm into interior decor are you a, see let me tell you something anything you are not competent in just keep quiet about it talking about it will be disgracing yourself there are so many people around ask them what do you do they say i'm into interior decor really like who like what how much can i pay you is there something you can do to me that will make me need you even if i don't like you you have a restaurant can we eat in your restaurant if we have a guest coming can we take the guest to your restaurant and be comfortable i have a church can i come to your church and sit down and be sure that god will bless me oh i'm a driver like who where do you know challenge yourself don't mark yourself and say i'm good there are many talented people inside and outside somebody wrote one song and came and sang it for me i said my brother please go and work on it god is helping you don't produce anything from this go and work on it it's obvious you i can show you at least five rules of music you broke on this i told them who is your role model who is your inspiration they say he mentioned expensive names as if it's just to talk i said how many of their videos do you have not their videos of the album they produce have you watched their stage rehearsals have you gone out of your way 
to find out how they rehearse. Listen, you don't learn from a man by watching his real life performance. You watch from a man by learning how he builds. You don't learn from Usain Bolt by seeing how he runs. No, you see how he rehearses. You don't learn from a man of God by just seeing how he displays the anointing. You learn the mystery of his secret place. Koinonia, I'm challenging you. God is taking us far. There are many of us here who would have entered certain levels of influence. Opportunities came and passed us by. Is still passing us by because we have not mastered that key that will give us influence. There are so many people in this place you are in business you are the only one who knows you are in business because your products you don't know nothing about business you will not sit down and learn you will not grow everybody will be what are you doing i'm into real estate what are you doing i'm a ceo ceo of nothing there's no result sit down and learn many young people moving around with suit and bible and an ipad what are you i'm a pastor my name is pastor pastor david revelation or david king or something that's not what will give you open the doors of ministry let me tell you something god knows as a person i am more than willing to invest into the life of anybody that is serious and ready to rise up believe me Anything you are doing, if it's not of standard, you see, and you don't get standard by default, you learn. Learn from the best. Don't learn from your colleagues. Your colleagues are your colleagues because something made you the same way. You rise up. You learn. Something you do not know is the reason why your life is limited. Something you know but have refused to believe is making you stay. God has given me access or common access to people and sometimes I look at where I am and it's like a dream I'm saying Joshua Selman what are you looking for in this place influence influence whenever you see a man of influence don't be angry it's not mistake results brothers and sisters I'm the firstborn in my family, but the way they are even treating me, I can't even talk. Result, result, result. Everybody say result. Produce result and you will switch the button. I'm 20 years, I'm 30 years, they are still treating me like a child. Result. Prove them wrong. Produce results. Don't make noise. I'm obsessed about studying successful people. I'm not ashamed. I, I have an appetite to confront my ignorance. I confront it with joy and gladness. I confront my ignorance with, with no sense of embarrassment at all. I like knowing what I don't know anything about. When I discover things in my life, I say, ah, this is what I didn't know. I go for that knowledge. I want you to produce results. The little level God has brought this ministry it's as a result of the results. The level of organization at the little level we are in, there is a formula to it. It's not just happening by mistake. That you come and as many as we are, there is still some level of organization. You don't guess, you learn. What you see today is what we knew yesterday. Tomorrow will reveal what we have known today. Please, I'm challenging you. We are going to pray. If you want to command influence, influence has monetary value. People will pay you and bless you in a way that will bring tears out of your eyes. And you will say, Lord, what, what is this? What are you doing to me? For if the cloud be full of rain, the Bible says they empty themselves upon the earth. Men of God, God is challenging us tonight stop being a mediocre surround yourself with three or four friends and say among all of them i'm the one who prays most that's nonsense mediocrity i'm the one who has revelation more mediocrity
somebody writes jam and gets 120 and his friend gets 80 and he turns and says kai but i gap you by how many points let's count no i'm not i'm not mocking it's, it's not a mockery i'm using it as an example don't feel bad if you didn't make it for jam in fact i, I hear they are going to write it we'll pray for them at the end of the service it's a challenge it's a challenge i know that this teaching is touching some of you there are people who are seated right now you can pretend like what i'm saying is not serious there are many people standing outside right to the back some of them are just standing and thinking about their lives i want to excel in my life and i want my excellence to be intentional set a high standard koinonia set a high standard challenge yourself when god gives you that influence men will thank you for being influential your children will thank you i was sharing with the school of ministry students some of the things i do today is no longer for myself if it's for myself i will stop doing some things because i've already created a system that will bless myself i've started thinking transgenerational both spiritual and physical not just physical children that anybody connected to me will be implicated for success just by being associated and lot went with abraham the secret place of abraham implicated lot until he was blessed who gets blessed following you or are you the type parents who warn their children about and say don't follow this this bad boy he's going to spoil your life please koinonia hear the voice of the spirit tonight it's time to settle down myself settle down and produce results stop guessing over your destiny prosperity is a reaction it's not dash advancement in ministry is a reaction we have never never said we'll raise a second offering in this ministry say oh we cannot pay for boss or we cannot do this no it has never happened and it will never happen in the name of jesus but it's, it's a formula it's a formula we don't have to manipulate you and squeeze your hand it's a formula find out what the formula is don't just enjoy and say kai this is a rich ministry find out what is the formula what is the secret of the anointing of the spirit upon our lives and the ministry find out do you care to find out are you humble enough to find out i always look at the people that are close to me and i always watch out for their interest in finding out process or results when I look at people who are close to me, I like to know what their passions are. If you are close to a man of God, there are pastors here, be careful because proximity can destroy your ability to learn. You are always seeing the result. Some of you come for Koinonia and you can sit down here and in the next five minutes, people are flying all over and just say, Kai Apostle is anointed. Do you know it is for the taking? Peter said, help me. And Jesus said, I can show you. Let me teach you what I'm doing that is making me standing. He lifted him. There is something you can learn. There is the secret of the war. There is a mystery you can learn. You can stand upon it. It's not abracadabra. It's not the more you see, the less you understand. The prophetic has a formula. The apostolic ministry has a formula. Don't guess in pride. Learn. Those who learn are the ones who rise because you see there are people some of you coming here alone has attracted a lot of mockery they say why come and sit down there a man of god can't you pray in your room and god will hear you is it not the same god we are worshiping ah yeah 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 nothing can be farther from the truth that it looks spiritual but it's an error are we together the next time anybody tells you that tell them human beings have prophetic implications human beings have prophetic implications lift your voice and pray in one minute say lord jesus lift my faith tonight i have faith in you i've tried medications i've tried human connections i've tried everything i know to do but i come before you the god of all flesh the one who can change my situation.
Lift your voice and make sure you are praying. Shkabarato sadabariada baladabash. Give me a visitation tonight, oh God. I refuse to be a spectator. You can change my story. Make sure you are praying. Lord, every spirit, go to the root of my problem, so God, that every force of darkness that is responsible for the situations in my life, it must be addressed tonight. It must be addressed tonight. That spirit that has tied my family down, tied my destiny down, tied my womb down. Those outside, make sure you're praying. No matter how far you are, the Lord is seeing your faith. You are enduring the cold because you want your destiny to change. You will not be disappointed tonight. Pray to the God that answers all flesh. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Though you are higher than any other. Awesome in power, our God. Sing it to him. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than many. Honor. Our God is greater. Awesome in power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a vision. I'm seeing I'm seeing a vision. I'm seeing a vision and in this vision I'm seeing chains. This is what I'm seeing. Before I even start the mass prayer, I'm seeing chains and those people affected the power of God is going to begin to come upon them inside and outside. I'm seeing chains. This is the spirit of delay. I'm seeing delay written in the atmosphere. Delay. Delay. I'm going to begin to pray. Listen, there are people whose lives and destinies have been held bound by the spirit of delay. By the spirit of delay no matter where you are inside or outside it's like a force an energy of the spirit i want to help those people outside here lift your hands 
just keep your hands lifted inside and outside just lift your hands the lord is asking me to stretch my hands towards you and as i stretch my hands towards you and begin to speak it's like fire the power of god will begin to come upon such people those who are outside you can stretch your hands just over your your various projectors in the name of the lord jesus that spirit i speak to you in the realm of the spirit you have held the destinies of men and women you have held the destinies of families but the bible says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of jacob will possess their possession therefore i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus and i speak every spirit of delay right now right now right now i stretch my hands by the anointing of the holy ghost i stretch it right now bring them out the year of multiplied grace i stretch my hands the angels of the, of the lord are moving row to row row to row row to row it will get to your turn inside and outside row to row if that's not your situation it will not affect you but you will never stand the power of god if this is one of the reasons god brought you here right now i stretch my hands outside lift your hands the angels of the lord are moving lord every row every row i keep my hands stretched that devil of delay you must leave you must leave you must leave the second overflow god is touching people there the second overflow like fire is coming upon people the second overflow that spirit of delay your time is up tonight your time is up tonight makapara to sotosh embreketeleko sheketa there's a lady wearing white hair tie the anointing of the spirit is causing that delay that delay right now that delay right now right now right now right now is a spell it's like a charm i'm seeing it on the heads of people i command that spell that charm of delay you must leave you must leave you must leave I tell you no spirit will stand the power of God tonight no you must let them go in the name of the Lord Jesus I come against you I come against you I come against you. Delay is a dangerous thing. It traps your life so that when you ought to move and make significant progress, it will hold you bound. There are many lives and destinies that are tied down families please lift your hands the Lord is telling me that he wants to visit the root of witchcraft in families pay attention to what I'm saying because the power of God will move in a mighty way there are families here hear me you love God, but you do not know what is at the root of the tragedies of the families. 
there are spirits there are covenants there are fraternities with darkness that have kept families bound it may not even be your fault you are inheriting the wickedness of men but tonight lift your hands i want to pray for you 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 as i speak over your life again the lord is going to be ministering to families it may not have anything to do with you as a person some of you you will step into visions immediately and begin to see a lot of destruction and havoc going on father in the name of jesus i'm praying right now inside the first overflow the second overflow across the road every family that is under the influence of any satanic manipulation lord you will not only identify them they must be free at the count of three i want you to shout i am free are you ready now one two three shake it take it shake it take it take it all tasks all tasks all tasks all tasks i call you by your name and i curse you by the god of heaven i call you by your name altars in benway state altars in koki state altars in katuna state altars in the west altars in the east my goodness shekete koto kete rekete tekete rekete kota every local government every state i set fire on those altars fire 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 on those altars fire on those altars every covenant with the waters every covenant with the air every covenant with the earth every covenant of darkness tying families i declare that this is your time of jubilee i send the word of judgment i send the word of judgment hallelujah i wish the lord can open your eyes to see the mighty things that are happening mighty things that are happening hallelujah listen something very strange will start happening here now listen listen to me because i just saw a vision like a bunch of keys it just dropped on the ground listen this this is a sign of access in the spirit the lord showed me a vision and i saw in the spirit a bunch of keys now it's not for everybody but i'm about to pray once it comes on you except god did not call me you will see doors open it's called breakthrough lift your head i stand under this apostolic anointing and in the name of jesus every destiny that needs this breakthrough at the count of three receive it receive it take it now 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 i distribute those keys in the spirit i distribute those keys inside and outside in the name of jesus in the name of jesus by the blood of the eternal covenant breakthroughs 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 the opening up of destinies 
the opening up of destinies the opening up of destinies listen those of you outside I want you to hear me because the Holy Spirit is going to do something now the Lord asked me to come out hallelujah hallelujah now I want down three my goodness there is such anointing in this place and I see the angels Lord the moment you count three I'm going to start moving across this crowd and the power of God will start falling on people whatever has locked your destiny it must open it right now are you ready now those outside please believe we're not playing games father in the name of Jesus may the angels move in this crowd in the name of Jesus at the count of three shout at one two three receive it right now. right now right now right now right now i stretch my hands as i move across let an anointing come as i pass your row as i pass your row you will stand it as i pass your row an anointing an anointing take it 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 now i stretch my hands take it take it this side receive it take it now 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 i stretch my hands take it now take it now everyone in this row receive it right now receive it right now take it now all those here there is an angel of the lord standing on your row take it now take it now take it now take it now just allow me pass your row as i'm coming there are angels walking with me as i'm coming the power of god will touch you right now i stretch my hands here everyone here right now take it now take it right now take it right now in the name of jesus i stretch my hands to you call this man come this big man come what's your name come now let's hurry up what's your name the lord is saying what's your name daniel daniel from where from edo state sir from edo state i mean are you in zaria Zaria. you are in zaria i want you to rejoice because you have entered a new level this night are you hearing what i'm saying as you celebrate them you connect to their prophecy listen because i'm seeing you in a cage this is what i see i've not started prophesying yet but i'm seeing you in a cage and i'm seeing you telling the lord i know that if i come here my situation will change in the name that is above all names i lay my hands upon you and i end that captivity right now take it right now in the name of the lord jesus christ who is grace there's someone grace around here who is grace i'm hearing that the lord is showing me someone grace who is grace please come quickly let's save time come where is your mother zango, zango. is she sick My sister is sick. don't worry is your mother sick she doesn't even know she's sick but she's sick i'm seeing an angel of the lord going to your house and healing two people your mother and your sister are you hearing what i'm saying your mother and your sister what do you do you're a student what do you do huh applicant job applicant do you believe that if i pray for you the lord will give you a job will you come and testify before god's people i lay my hands upon you and i release that job for you in the name of the lord jesus christ from this road down like this there are a number of ladies with abdominal pain because i'm seeing like the angel of the lord is moving something i stretch my hands right now whoever they are the power of god is coming upon them right now right now right now right now 
in the name of jesus christ that pain that abdominal pain must go it must go right now in the mighty name of jesus christ let me try to walk to the first overflow in the name of jesus christ look at me you will start experiencing the power of god in your life in a very strange way are you hearing what i'm saying i lay my hands upon you right now step into a new season i want to pray for this overflow there are so many people please believe god don't think i've come outside because i want to identify with you so you don't think you are at a disadvantage no distance is no barrier some of you are enduring cold it's touching my heart talk more of the heart of god are you hearing what i'm saying and some of you need to watch because what you are seeing me do is what you will be doing in some years to come so just watch it you are just receiving miracles there is an impartation joseph who is joseph here yeah. joseph i'm hearing a name joseph you are wearing like a collar like for cold who is that you are joseph the lord is going to do mighty things through you stand up there's cold so you don't enjoy yourself are you hearing me i want to stay true with god and watch god do great things in your life in the name of jesus i'm seeing two old women they are sitting on the same seat where are they here this row two mama like this where are they is there some who is that the lord is asking me to talk to them just leave them mama do i know you have we seen before i'm looking at you can, can they if they cannot hear we can speak any language can i talk to you mama i'm looking at you and i'm seeing the spirit of death over your head what I'm, don't be afraid i'm seeing the spirit of death over your head and the lord is saying if we don't pray for you that's how you'll be getting up and a bike will collide with a car it's like a station wagon and it will kill you for nothing but the lord is saying i should pray for you the second thing is there's no finances at all everything flat is that true is that true in your life is what why you came where is your daughter do you have a daughter huh i'm seeing a lady close to you like a, a i don't know if she's a, a daughter or a logical or not because i'm seeing the lord is saying that he wants to bless her with marriage you are the one okay you are the one standing close to her are you ready to marry because god is going to surprise you do you believe that huh say i receive i receive, I receive. you are not you are you are trying to be a lady but my dear prophecy you a madman like this i'm only responding to god just out and see what the anointing does shout i receive as loud as i receive jesus christ i break that curse over your head mama you will not die all of you here stretch your hands to her and say mama will not die take us your mother pray for her mama will not die in the name of the lord jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah I'm looking at this other mama I don't know what's wrong with this woman but there are three things I see the devil want to do number one eyes ah huh? but two I'm seeing her inside a coffin they have already closed it and there's blood on top of the coffin are you hearing what I'm saying? somebody use her eyes to make money with it this is what the Lord is showing me I'm not a prophet of doom me like what i'm saying but i cannot but say what god is asking me to say are you here i'm seeing a lady here I'm, I'm still going to come in please we're trying to work with the time um but i'm seeing a lady here how you know is the power of god is about to come upon you right now one of the ladies here this is witchcraft that has destroyed the life of your family and the lord wants me to minister to you in this other overflow father wherever she is right now locate her the power of God is going to come on one lady right now. It will be like fire. You can't stand it. It will come upon you. Please, when that happens, let me know that lady right now. Not just those inside. I know God is... But this role, this role, Father, wherever that lady is, I'm declaring right now by the anointing of the Spirit of God that she will be located so that her can be free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um... Your name means joy. It's a tribal name, but it has joy. It's like it. Who is that person, please? Your name means joy. That's if you translate your name, it has something to do with joy. Joy or joyful or something like that. 
we have someone like that? Please make sure you are telling the truth so that it doesn't look like we're acting. If, if you are that cop with the protocol, who is that? What's that? Huh? Come. What's your name? What I means what? Child of joy. I want to pray for you. Where is your mother? She's in Kaduna. Is this working? Okay. Tell your mother her time will lay hands on you. And I want that if you go back and see your mom, just ask her to allow you to break through. My hands upon you right now. I don't mean their English names are Joy. What's, what's your name? From where? Your name is Yah. All of you, your name is Joy. Okay, I'm going to name you. Let me talk to you. Come, my dear. Where is your family? Kaduna, I'm going to pray for you. Because that has tied your family down. I look at me, look at me. Does it make sense to you? The Lord is dead because I'm seeing your family tied down in witchcraft. And God is saying that he's lifting them up by his grace. Father, let it end right now. Out of this family. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hands on all of you. I lay my hands on all of you. I lay my hands upon you. Help her please. Help her so that she Who is that? In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. For you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Please hold on. There is a lady wearing white scarf. She's on at the wall. She's leaning on the wall. Where is that lady? Please bring her. I'm seeing in a vision. There's a lady wearing white scarf. White scarf. Is there someone like that? You are leaning on the fence. White scarf. Who is that? Is there someone like that? Give God a praise. Who is that? What's your name? Favor. But there's nothing favorable in your life. And the Lord is saying, change her story. Do I know you? That your name is Favor? I want to pray for you. Do you believe if I pray for you, the Lord will grant you favor? Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. I restore favor to you right now i restore favor to you by the power of the holy spirit come my dear this lady yes come hallelujah there is an anointing listen there is an anointing um i promise those of you outside by the grace of god hopefully by next miracle service We'll try to work on amplifying the sound so that it will, it will be very clear for you outside. Alright, I know that the people did their best but you can see that the crowds are increasing. Praise the Lord. But there was an anointing that was upon Esther. It's called the favor anointing. In the course of the meeting, I'm going to be praying for people. But the Lord is saying I should minister this to you. Do you believe it? Huh? Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon this lady and I release this grace upon her. In the name of Jesus, I release this anointing upon her. In the name of Jesus, I release this anointing upon her. In the name of Jesus, who came from Kano? I'm seeing Kano. Come. You are not alone. You are with one lady. Where are you? Huh? Two of you. Husband and wife. Come. Did you tell me you are coming? Come. She's your friend. Who is she? How are you, my dear? You came from Kano. What do you do? I'm see, I, I'm, no, you are not just a student. There's something else you are doing. I'm teaching. You are teaching. How about her? Witchcraft is what God is breaking now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because I'm seeing something like a chain leaving your friend. I command that chain to leave right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hands upon you and I, I command that chain to go. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for you I declare. You will step into a new dimension of intimacy with God. That's what you need. You have been praying. Boom fasted. Help him. 
you fasted that God will give you an anointing. It's not an anointing for ministry, it's an anointing for fellowship with God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of 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 Jesus Christ. Look at me. What has happened to your music ministry? That's what the Lord is saying I should tell you. Huh? Do you sing? Sing something. Let's hear. My God is awesome. He will move the whole world. What has happened to your music ministry? God gave you an anointing. You have been playing games with it. Come. Because God wants to restore that fire. As soon as I pass you, I saw, I saw, I heard like music and God says restore his music ministry. There are three things that can destroy a man's ministry, any ministry. One, pride. Huh? Two, women or men or anything. Just human beings. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then number three is premature exposure. When people don't stay with the spirit to create a track record. But I'm going to pray for you. Huh? you your characters, you, you, must, you must behave well. Behave like where you are going. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is, you, you need a lot of restoration in your life. It's not because anything is wrong. You, it's just that you need to step up otherwise you will not experience the grace of God but there is an anointing upon your music ministry and I lay my hands upon you right now you step into that level in the name of Jesus Christ all of you here please lift your hands I want to pray for you please lift your hands and believe as I pray for you and I count three I want you to shout the name Jesus there are people here under yokes and spells. As soon as you shout that name Jesus, the anointing of the Spirit will move through this very overflow. This very overflow. I wanted to leave, but God is still speaking to me about this overflow. Please, I want you to believe. Help them so they don't fall inside the gutter. Father, I'm doing as you have instructed me. And I prophesy right now that as they all shout the name of Jesus, let the power of God visit the foundations of every family represented here are you ready now at the count of three one two three right now in the name of jesus right now help them right now in the name of jesus i cost that spirit i cost that spirit i cost that spirit i cost that spirit i cost that, that spirit from your life and your destiny there is a, a man that appears to one lady here. As I pray for you now, fire is coming upon you. You will never see that man again, not in your dreams. I command him, go, 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 go. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring you deliverance by the power of the Holy Spirit. It never comes to you again. Never, never, never. In the name of Jesus greater strength greater prayer fire greater prayer fire greater prayer fire in the name of Jesus the lady with the black heart tap that lady for me look at me stretch your hands where you are an anointing is coming upon you right now beauty for ashes says the spirit beauty for ashes I release that anointing upon you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ before I leave this place, there are seven people. The spirit of prayer is coming upon you right now. Seven people. Lord, where are they right now? Right now, across this place. Seven people. It's like fire to come upon you. Some are men, some are women. Take it. Take it. Take it right now. Take it right now. The spirit of prayer. The spirit of prayer. The spirit of prayer. 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 The spirit of prayer. Like never before. Tap this lady for me. The Lord is visiting you and he's wiping your tears. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is saying he's wiping your tears. By the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord is wiping your tears. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is wiping your tears. Let it end right now. Let it end now. 
now never to return to you again never to return i stretch my hands all over this room right now right now right now right now every force of darkness never returns in the name of jesus there is a spirit i'm dealing with i know what i'm seeing right now right now i judge you by the god of heaven right now let them go let them go let them go now in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing the hands of certain people tied here like a chain holding your hands those of you here just lift your hands don't worry once it constants you you cannot stand it father visit them right now you will feel like literally fire on your hands a chain is breaking right now i stretch my hands let it break 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 now 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 let it break i break it by the power of the holy ghost by the power of the holy ghost now i break that chain in the name of jesus i break that chain in the name of jesus i break that chain in the name of jesus I restore your glory I restore your glory in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus please pray and ask the Lord to visit you pray and ask the Lord to visit you aha aha you must go in the name of Jesus you must go 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 any spirit represented here you must leave right now I tell you any force of darkness tying down your life Hold on, please. Hold on. Who is this, Mama? My brother. What's wrong with their marriage? This person I'm seeing was supposed to die October 21st. It's because of prayer. Because you used to carry this picture everywhere you go. I'm seeing you in a meeting. Stand up, madam. I'm seeing you in a meeting. No, no, no. Please. This is help her with a handkerchief. This is a mother. You don't have to cry, please. This woman you are seeing is a very good woman. I'm seeing you in all kinds of meetings. You are not even concerned about your own problem. You are lifting up this person because I'm seeing 21st October. He was to be to die and please, Mama, it's okay. It's okay. The Lord will help you. In the name of Jesus Christ because you too you have problems but you are not even concerned about your problem you are not concerned about what is happening to your finances you are not concerned about the pain in your back you keep feeling pain in your back when you wait as i enter here i hear my pain go just go away the pain just went away when she came here look at this even before the meeting from kaduna me and my hold on Okay. I'm all away from Kaduna. We, my children sleep with your, with your scriptures. We work with your scriptures. Even if I will go and pass you, read, the scriptures is on. The two of them are pastors. One is here. The other one is here. I finish university here in Abu. Just this prayer, may we do? Oh, yeah. Hold on. I have a ministry. <laughs> you have a ministry. My goodness. Can you imagine? I'm looking at you. What is I'm seeing your ministry has something to do with spring. The spring. The spring. In the name that is above all names. Mama, listen. Please don't cry. The Lord is visiting you. Because this woman you see is an intercessor. This woman can stay for hours praying for people who are not even her, it's none of her business as the Holy Spirit ministers to her you see but nothing is changing in your own life you pray for people and god will do miracles it's true. is that true the lord says i should tell you your whole life would you Amen. hallelujah please come follow me mama the lord is wiping Amen. are you hearing what i'm saying the lord is wiping your tears who is this Huh? Ah, mommy, this is not your son. Hold on. This boy is not your. You are calling him son, but he's not your son because I'm looking at him and I'm not seeing a father. Where's your father? He's dead, sir. Father is dead. 
and this is what the Lord, I'm looking at him and I'm not seeing father. It's like the father is related to you. He's my elder. And so you took him as your son. That's why you are calling him son. But this boy is not your son. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord is going to use you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord is going to use you mightily. Huh? Mommy, you, God is wiping your tears because this finance, the thing can't just enter your hand. It will enter and go out. And we have to pray. Because the people that killed his father want to destroy you. And we have to pray. I'm not, I don't want you to feel bad. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's gone and but we are not just going to allow it happen until they come and kill mama. And it's because of the destiny of this person. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord is going to visit you in a way that will surprise you. What's wrong with him? You see, Ba, what the Lord is showing me, I'm not going to say everything here, but what the Lord is showing me, today, they will see that he has one sickness. They will do another test. Huh? They will do a scan and come out with something else. The devil is just playing, using medicine to play with your mind. This is witchcraft. They have already buried this person and this issue has finished. But in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm declaring and I'm speaking to everyone here. I stand under the anointing and I pray for you that every power that is tying down your family, it must leave you this night in the name of Jesus. It must leave you this night. It must go, 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 go. Go! The same thing, it must go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please come, madam. The Lord is saying I shall anoint you. Come. You are going to do great things for God. God is going to use you greatly. I know you may not think you are like that, but God will use you from today. I open your eyes to the realm of the spirit. You will step into unusual dimensions of grace. I activate dimensions in your spirit. Elisha prayed and the eyes of the servant was open. I open your eyes to visionary encounters. In the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands towards our mother here. This woman's situation has really touched me. Come mama. No, no, no. Mommy, please stand up. Stretch your hands and let's pray for our mother. All the way from Kaduna. A woman with a ministry interceding for others this is our brother the devil wants to terminate the life of this person I like us to pray over this picture and say in the name of Jesus the same power that raised Christ from the dead the same power that raised Christ from the dead hallelujah mommy will you believe if I tell you you are stepping into an unusual healing ministry from tonight listen you believe with all your heart have you forgotten the dream god showed you where you saw yourself in a meeting praying for people i believe i saw it so i remember did you tell me is now is the time for that dream to come to pass because you had a dream you saw yourself praying for people i'm just praying healing them and you are healing them and you have been interceding innocently the Lord is telling me that now is the time for your ministry to step into another level. Two areas. The issue of barrenness. The issue of barrenness. It will be like a special anointing to destroy barrenness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You will come back and testify before the people of God. This thing is being recorded. And the second area. The second area is HIV. Such an anointing will come upon you. As you pray for people with HIV. Listen. Paul said, I desire to see you. He said that I may impart some spiritual gift. It doesn't matter the age. Impartation can happen. Are you hearing what I'm saying, madam? Hold my hands. I want you to shout Jesus. And watch what begins to happen to you. Go ahead. Jesus. Father, I pray from today. An anointing an anointing a transference of grace an ordinary woman will become a woman of power from today an ordinary woman will carry an anointing of the spirit in a strange way in a strange way go and heal the sick 
go and heal the sick go and heal the sick go and heal the sick in the name of jesus christ come madam look at me come watch this mommy lay your hand on him and pray for him just do what i'm asking you to do lay your hands and speak to him look at me you carry this anointing and you will wreak havoc in the kingdom of darkness anointing is not for show brothers and sisters but i tell you it will scare you this anointing will bring wealth to you people will sow into your life because of the impact in her life come on go when you go back lay this picture on your brother and pray for him god will take him out of that hospital and when he does bring him here and he will come and testify to the glory of god the lord told me he's wiping your tears come sir what do you do what do you do what did you study i'm going to pray for you you want to further Yes, sir. Political science. Because God is going to use you in the area of leadership. It was in, in prayer God put in your spirit to study political science. Amen. Although what you studied, um, I'm not seeing a university like a college or something. College of education. Federal College of Education. You study something that has to do with education. Business education. Business education. But then it's leadership. And God is taking you to that position. When you study it, he will make you a great leader. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Wait, Mr. Man. Just wait. Let me finish. I'm praying for you. Make sure when God blesses you, you never forget this woman. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You never forget this woman. She has done what for you many people will not do. She has taken you as a son. She has spent her money to the last to help you. Is that true? If you forget this woman, God will not be happy with you. Let me use this as an encouragement. You see, when somebody suffers to help you and you rise, you will be a wicked person to forget that person. Some of us are like this. Some of our parents have labored to help us. Don't say, I must be a millionaire before I bless them. The day God gives you 20,000, you can take 1,000 and say, Mama, take. Some of us are very greedy. God is blessing you, but you are still latching onto the little resources of the parents. It must change. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Father, take him to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, I impart upon you wisdom and leadership. Occupy that mountain. Fire is coming upon your hands. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. Father, visit our mother. For what you have done, Mama, my God will visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you from the depth of my heart. My God will visit you in the name of Jesus. Please bring this woman for me. This one wearing this very one. Yes. This, she's, she's not feeling fine. Something is wrong with her. Please let her come. Is God blessing you tonight? Who brought her? Please, who brought her? If you brought her, please come with her so that we'll know what to do. There's no man. What's wrong with her, Mama? Diabetes. Diabetes. How old is she? Do you know? Oh, you just met her? Or you know her? Okay, it's your junior sister. From where? Can she hear me? Or do you need somebody to talk to her in the language? You need translation. If I talk to you, can you talk to her in the language? Tell her that Jesus Christ is going to heal her of diabetes. What tribe are you, madam? Eh? He got her up as to Alpha now. Carry mic. What are you here? Oh, yeah, yeah, carry mic. Because I'm trying to. Let's make this easy. Give him mic, please. 
every tribe here there must be somebody if there's nobody who lay hands on somebody for the purpose there's no other mic okay don't worry come pastor tell her that jesus christ is going to visit her jesus ask her question tell her god will heal her of diabetes or joy doctor diabetes and the dream of death that she has been having. Or now, who can nale? And God is going to heal her. Or Joanna Dionale, who play a way. How long has she been suffering? I'm quite bad. Guy, go there. Does she know what's going on? Does she know what's going on? Does she know what's going on? Diabetes. Diabetes. What couldn't she do? Then when man is going to go there. Mama, ask, tell her I'm going to pray for her and the power of God will come. And me and her will run here now. Tell her to show me. 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 I'm going to pray for her and we will not walk, we will run together. Tell her not to worry. Let's pray. In the name of Jesus. If we do Jesus, in the name of Jesus, if we do Jesus, I rebuke who dot down diabetes, diabetes from her body. In the name of Jesus, if we do Jesus, look at what is happening to her. It's a spirit. Look at. Are you seeing this? Look at the spirit. You call it sickness. Look at what is happening. This is an old woman. Ah, huh? diabetes is a spirit. I command it to live now. In the name of Jesus, out of her. Mama, tell her. Mama. Tell her. Then you can that she's going to do what she has never done. And she should not be afraid. Tell her to raise her hand. Walk, come. Fast. Come. 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 Come on, give Jesus praise. Look at the miracle here. Look at the miracle. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, come on. Give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Hold on. Sam, give us one powerful Igala song. Where is Sam? You sang one song during Annie's wedding. Eh? Sing that song. Tell Mama she's going to dance now. Eh? And the Gala people will join her and dance to the shame of the devil. Hosanna, mm. oh my David. Oh, Chonuka, Wama. Hosanna, Hosanna, oh my David. Oh, Chonuka, Wama. Hosanna, Hosanna, oh my David. Oh, Chonuka, Wama. Hosanna, Hosanna, oh my David. Oh, Chonuka, Wama. Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, oh my David, oh John, oh Kama, Hosanna, Hosanna, oh my David, oh John, oh Kama, Hosanna, Hosanna, oh my David, oh John, oh Kama, Hosanna, Hosanna, oh my David, oh John, oh Kama, Hosanna, Hosanna, oh my David, oh John, oh Kama. This miracle remains permanent forever. How many? How many of you saw the way that woman was standing here? You saw the way she was standing. Look how God can change a man's story. Hallelujah! Give Jesus praise. God bless you. There is a woman here that they brought. I don't know where she is. But I'm seeing it's, it's something that is a medical condition. I don't know if it's a fibroid or a growth. Please, who is that person? We really have to be fast. A growth, like a, I don't know if it's a growth that the person came with. They, they said the person has something like a growth. I don't know if it's a fibroid now. Whether it's 
Eh? No, no, no. The person I'm talking about is here. Oh. It may be inside or outside. I'm seeing somebody. Um, it's like there's a medical condition that has to do with a swelling or growth or something. Who is that? Who is that person? Come. No, you're all, you are not sick. It's, it's demons. Just stand. We'll deal with that one now. Now, your eh? No, no, no. Leave him. This your stomach is swollen. They want to kill you. Somebody, somebody hit you with something in a dream some months back. You didn't even remember. Now your stomach is swelling. We'll deal with that one. I don't know you. I'm just just stand there. That one is is an easy something. This come the come. You have a problem. Come up. The devil. I, the devil wants to destroy this lady because if i don't pray for you they will i'm seeing your case getting so serious they will now take you to india for a kidney pr transplant what's wrong with you kidney nef the nephritis what does that mean inflammation how do you know it's the doctor told me i cannot lie on both sides of my you can't lie down here yes and even yet i sleep straight you see the wickedness of the devil that even to sleep you can't sleep this way you can't sleep how and how else do you sleep lie down flat that devil must leave you what's your name Precious. you know how who knows her before you now start talking another rubbish story daddy Please come, sir. Our, our daddy. Yes, sir. Our daddy is praying a prayer. And the prayer has to do with, no. The Hold your photo like this, sir. Open it to the third one. That's what I want to talk to you about. One, okay. I'm seeing, okay, I thought it was the third one. Back, I'm seeing another photo. This thing is like, it's supposed to be three. It's not two. Where is the third one? It's at home. That's the one I want to talk about. That's why I said take it to the third one. You brought two here. But the person I want to talk about, there is a third one. Who is in that photo? Henry. Henry. It's at home. Because we want to pray. Demons stop him from coming. Did you ask him to come? I asked him to come. He chose not to. That's what I'm saying. If that boy had come, let me tell you. Do you know? That if 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 you can come for koinonia alone, you don't want to know the powers you overcame to arrive. Tell somebody koinonia and see the way demons fight. They are coming here. Flimsy excuses. They will tell you, ah, I just think I don't have this. It's because the devil knows. He knows. That's what happened to this person. And you see, today would have been his day of visitation. I looked at this and I saw three, because I'm not, you may see me looking at you physically, but I'm operating from the spirit. I saw three pictures and I said, go to the third one. You left the third one at home, just like the person to come. If he agreed, the Holy Ghost would have reminded you and forced you to carry the third one. You see, please, brothers and sisters, when you invite people and they refuse, don't insult them. You're a spiritual man. You should know that is to you a sign that God wants them to be here. Are we together now? Daddy, I'm going to talk to you now and I'll pray with you. There's something about him, but I will not tell you in public. Huh? So that you will not hear that this person left the faith into something else. You hear what I'm saying? I don't want, it's not something where this is a public talk, but it, we don't want to hear that kind of story because it's already happening. There is a spirit that converts men. It doesn't happen by default. We must attack it in the name of Jesus Christ. Where is this our lady? Come. We are going to pray for this kidney. Both of your kidneys is verified that you have a, a kidney problem. So we are going to pray. Lay your hands on it. Please, can we pray for this dear one? Anything that happens to one of us happens to all of us. Don't say it's not yet my issue. Uh -uh. Pray for her. Your prayer is working. There's a surgery the Lord is doing in her. Place your hand on her. I command that devil right now out 
out of her that spirit masquerading as kidney kidney problem in the name of Jesus Christ I command a miracle for you right now I stretch my hands I make contact by the anointing of the Holy Ghost my goodness there's such power flowing I declare a miracle I declare a miracle I declare a miracle stand up stand up what couldn't you do before press it press it right now surprised even her her and her own body she's even surprised that something is happening her and her own body i pray that god will anoint you to be able to bring healing and deliverance to people in the name of the lord jesus christ you don't know how cheap the devil is until you are really anointed if you are not anointed you will make a ceremony out of nothing but when that anointing is not about trying to get it done if it's there is there if it's not there is not there my dear check it honestly if there's pain tell us we'll not be afraid there's... God is touching another lady heal her oh God in the name of Jesus fire is coming on a lady's throat I don't know what has to do. I'm about to pray for the sick, but I'm seeing throat right now. There is a lady like that. Fire is coming. Something will touch your throat. It's like a sickness. My dear, I'd like you to shout, I am healed. Shout it. I am healed. Shout it again. I am healed. Shout it one more time. Go and check yourself and you come back to testify. In the name of Jesus, give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. The anointing is on that lady covering her, her mouth, her nose. This lady, I don't know who she is. I'm not, yes, that very lady you are holding. There's a strong anointing on her. Strong anointing on her. In the name of Jesus Christ, strong anointing on her. We're going to be very fast because it's cold and we have to there's one of the ushers the power of God is coming on you now I know you are doing ushering work wherever you are I'm seeing an usher please bring that person right now an usher lady right now you are busy doing your work quietly but the anointing of God will land on you right now where's the usher please bring her you are an usher you are doing your work that's all right but God needs to visit you now. That you are walking, whether ushering or protocol, you mind your business. There's somebody in welfare, welfare. The power of God is coming on somebody in welfare right now. Welfare department, welfare department. I'm seeing an anointing coming on somebody in welfare department. God just does strange things. They are called signs and wonders. We really don't know why it's done. Before we continue, there's one person from protocol. That's what I see in the spirit. Protocol department. The protocol department. There's somebody that the Lord is touching right now. In protocol department, wherever you are, I really don't care where, whether inside or outside. But God is touching somebody right now. Right now in protocol department. It's like fire. It will just come on you all of a sudden it's a sign and a wonder it's a miracle please let me have those people out there's a reason why i'm calling them out that person from poshri who is that protocol department where's the person from where? Well, well, well.
Hallelujah. Bring three of them. It's a prophetic language. I want to tell you what God is saying through this. The first impartation is God prophesying to men that you are entering into new seasons. So just like an usher brings you, it's a prophetic word. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release it upon you. I release it upon you right now. Just like an usher takes you into a new level. I stand under this anointing and I prophesy enter a new season. Enter a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, the impartation upon the welfare person is the mystery of supplies. The Lord is saying he's ending stagnancy. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is ending stagnancy. In the name of Jesus Christ, the person from the protocol, the Lord is saying, I will be your defender. Even in this season, I release that word upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, please everyone that came with a sick person, um, it's already happening to Pastor Femi, but Pastor Femi and three members of Rema will come under the anointing right now. Three members who are members of Rema Chapel. That's what I'm seeing as it's happening to him. It's happening to three people. Three people who attend Rema Chapel. Three people. In the name of the Lord Jesus. It's a new season for you. New season for you. New season for you. By the power of the Holy Spirit. You don't have to bring them out. Just leave them where they are. Hallelujah. We have five minutes to do this. Five minutes because there is the session where I prophesy. Please make sure we are going to try to finish fast. But make sure you receive everything. Don't come and waste your time and stay. Now all those who came with sick people. Apart from those who have been healed. If you brought somebody sick, please bring them out quickly. Quickly, let's lay hands on them. Give us some question. Please, quickly. The Lord is healing people. There's the healing anointing in this place right now. God is a miracle worker. God is a miracle worker. Please, quickly. No matter which of the overflows, brothers and sisters, there is multiplied grace in this house. Don't come and go back sick. You just need a touch. It's, it's just a touch. There's no need for any long story. So you don't necessarily have to be saying this, what is wrong with me if I don't ask you. Just a touch. Even if you are coming here for the first time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those of us who are out here, Jesus loves you. That's why he wants to heal you. Please. I want you to receive. You can reject it. But I want you to receive it with all your heart. As I pray for you, you go back, check yourself. Because of time, we may not have time to share testimony. But hold on, please. Let me say something about testimonies. Um, it is, you are robbing God of glory when God gives you healing and blessings. There are so many people who God has been touching, but they never return. To give thanks one of the ways you maintain your miracle is by giving thanks please come your breakthrough has come yes please madam come the lord is bringing a visitation to you right now don't put her up just keep her somewhere because the anointing is still on her and so that she doesn't keep collapsing up and down Look how many people are trusting God for healing. Ma, please look at me. God is restoring you financially, spiritually. Financially, there is an anointing on you as I speak to you. Financially, spiritually. I'm seeing God step even into your marriage. Our mother is crying. Your marriage. This is the reason why you came. Because there's nothing there. God is stepping in to do a miracle for you. To the glory of his name. Miracle for you. Who is this? Your mom. What's wrong with her? She has, she has been sick for three years. And those who don't know what 
Why didn't you bring her here? Yola. Yola. Hold the picture. Just hold it. I will use you as a point of contact. Hold it with both of your hands. The power of God will come through the picture to you and will touch her right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let your healing power touch mama. She's in your lab, but touch her, oh God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God is also bringing speed into your life. Speed, right now, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Speed, I prophesy it upon you. Never to be the same again. And we pray for healing for mama. He will testify in the name of Jesus. The anointing is so strong on you. God is bringing restoration in your marriage. God is bringing restoration in your finances. God is bringing restoration in your spiritual life. I command everything the devil has stolen to give way. In the name of Jesus. There are so many people here and we are going to be very fast. Just a touch. Please, I want you to believe. If you are standing in for somebody, you can agree with them. As you go back, you can touch them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to believe we'll be very fast in the name of Jesus. All over the congregation, I want you to begin to pray in tongues because immediately after this, we'll be prophesying. While you are praying in tongues, pass your prayer request. Both the one for souls and then your prayer request. Please pass it. So ushers, you can split yourself inside and outside. Someone attend to those in the overflows. Please, very good. Thank you, Jesus. Let your power touch your people right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A glorious God. A miracle world. Right Hold on, let me attend to this gentleman. I promise that we'll look at him. Everybody look if you can look at it from your screens or wherever. You see that when you look at this guy, this is unusual. This is abnormal, right? How long has it been, my brother? Since last year. What happened to you? Uh, the, uh... I am, I'm just sick. I don't know what is happening to me. So I went to the hospital. They said I should go and do scanning. They said my spleen don't, don't big. My spleen don't big. So later on, what is that? Come now, doctor. You're already there. The spleen is an organ that reserves blood just below the ribs on the left side. I'm wondering that it's a cancer is disturbing me. Cancer. Cancer of what? For now, I'm still there for this hospital for this uh, shika. So they never told me for cancer for what was still. Who told you about this place? It's my friend. May God bless that friend forever. In the name of Jesus. My brother, look at me. Do you believe Jesus can touch you? I, I believe Jesus. Love Jesus. I love Jesus. I'm born again. I'm born again, sir. You're serious with him? Yes, sir. Very, very serious. Very serious. I want you to know. Do you think he will just watch you just die like that? Do you believe it's his will for your stomach to be swelling? If you have a child and you have the power to help that child and you see the child's stomach swelling like that, will you smile and tell him continue and die? Is that love? So I want you to know that this thing, God has no hand in it. This is the devil. The Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy the works of the devil. Lay your hands on your stomach. Don't let the name cancer scare you. You understand? It is because of what you have heard, the conditioning in your spirit that has made you feel that it's cancer. Uh, and made you feel it is destructive. There is the life of God. It's called the way. The very life of God. And I want to pray to you. You believe that? You want to kill that cancer and it must leave your body so that you will not die. I believe that like every other person, you have your plans and aspirations. And this is already threatening you to cut short your life. Huh? Are you married? Where's your wife? Because I'm seeing your wife crying. Your wife is already thinking now. And saying that this is how my husband will die. And I'll have to start looking for another man to marry me. The devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus. Father, do a miracle for this brother. We know that cancer is a spirit. In the name of Jesus. Cancer. Die. In the name of Jesus. The condition for your disappearance in this body will bring them to place. And I'm prophesying in the name of Jesus that this cancer will die and it will leave your body forever. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. You will return and you will testify. Make sure you testify when God gives you a breakthrough. What's your name? Sarah. Sarah. So make sure you testify in the name of Jesus Christ. those outside can we rise this is a very prophetic moment hallelujah this is a very very serious moment the requests here contain the names of loved ones I want you to know that everyone is an evangelist this year there is there is need for massive salvation the Lord spoke to me and said he's trusting that he will find the people who will bring souls this year like never before and i told him i said lord i'm available so make sure that from now till december you don't come alone we, we are on a mission not just to ease ourselves of the guilt of not being soul winners it's serious business hallelujah please those who are yet to submit the names of their loved ones that you are trusting God for them to be saved and then our requests very quickly we have a few minutes now we're going to do it in this order the moment let me make an altar call before we pray for this so we can conserve our time there are people here hear me first overflow second overflow across the road listen there are people here probably you were invited and you know that you need to make your ways right with Jesus the Bible says for God so loved the world he so loved you and he demonstrated that love by giving his all his one and only begotten son please by the way I don't want you to miss the series we are starting next week we are taking a series on the gospel we are going to be examining who Jesus is and the message that he brought what is the content in the gospel that really saves men so this is profound we preachers have been distracted teaching people on restoration and demons we need to get back and let people understand who Jesus is what message did he bring and why is it very powerful where are we really going with all this Christianity thing so it's a powerful series you don't want to miss it will be having that all through February praise the Lord it will rattle the foundation of your understanding about God and will be walking 
in exchange hallelujah for instance let me give you a little preview um the message of jesus when he came his message was just one word repent that's all jesus said repent so we're going to be checking what does it mean to repent does it mean to come and emotionally answer a, a, a poem to repeat after the man of god what, what is the what is the jurisdiction of that word repent hallelujah so this is very very important i'm going to make an altar call now and while the people march forward please clear the way for them we'll stretch our hands and be interceding first for souls leave the issue of your needs we're going to intercede you wrote their names you know call them by their names and say lord we receive their salvation if you save me you can save them you don't want to watch your family members in hell and they are calling on you and saying you know me we came out from the same womb but some of them we know that they are going to hell there's no confusion about it god is a god of love we'll be learning next week but then the truth is there is hell don't let anybody deceive you there is a place called hell there are people there right now praise the lord you are here you need to make your ways right with god you've been hearing preachers talk again and again outside inside you probably are making this decision for the first time seriously in your life or you've been answering many other calls you don't even know how many and you don't know the name of what you have been doing and tonight you are saying i really want to come out and make a decision or you have even given your life to christ you are a pastor you are you know functioning in the body of christ but you know that you need a a rededication of your life things happen around your life discouragements god didn't answer your prayer and he made you to derail out of the way of the lord those two categories of people i'm going to count one to five please for time's sake for time's sake wherever you are leave your seat and run like there's fire on the mountain especially for those outside one quickly god bless you god bless you don't don't fight it win that war tonight there are so many people coming from outside no matter how far don't say it's too far make your way to jesus god bless you one two keep coming please don't stop don't let your friend don't let anyone stop you this is a destiny decision you have seen the power of god you have seen the grace of god you know that he loves you that he allowed you come for koinonia tonight it's a sign that he loves you and he has great plans for you make your way to the front very quickly while they come keep coming please stretch your hands towards this request and begin to pray in tongues please everybody pray in tongues first for the salvation forget about your prayer request please keep coming you know you need to be out here no matter how long it will take please make your way to the front no matter what you have done jesus loves you and he can give you a new beginning so make your way to the front stretch your hands and let's pray on this request all of you that are inside just stretch your hands as a point of contact those outside stretch your hands towards the screen and let's pray lord we pray for every soul Every soul, every soul, every soul, every soul, every soul, every soul in this place. Lord, save them. Some of them are not even Christians. Save them to the uttermost. Young and old, we receive their salvation. Give them dreams, give them encounters. You died for them, they must not go to hell. You have great plans for them. They need to experience the love of Jesus. We intercede for their souls. We intercede for their souls. We intercede for their souls. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, save our fathers. Save our mothers. Save our brothers. Our classmates. Our colleagues in the office. In the name of Jesus. Our families no matter how far they are from the cross bring them to meetings give them encounters holy spirit we permit your ministry in their lives in the name of jesus christ
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now begin to pray over your request. Lay your hands over your request by faith and say, Lord, I turn it into a testimony. Go ahead and pray. I turn it into a testimony. I turn it into a testimony. I turn it into a testimony. Father, give your people testimonies. Breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus, we bring this before your altar. Give your people manifold testimonies. Manifold testimonies. Manifold testimonies. Manifold testimonies. Manifold testimonies. Manifold testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Manifold testimonies. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, we pray for every soul represented here. We release angels of salvation wherever they are in the name that is above all names. We authorize these angels to hunt for their souls. They will know no peace till they find the cross. In the name of Jesus Christ, we release dreams we release visions of Jesus. We release encounters with the world. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere they turn to, they will hear the gospel. They will hear it in church. They will hear it in class. They will hear it everywhere. For those who have vowed that they will not give their life to Christ. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we we place their stubbornness side by side with the blood of Jesus and we declare that their souls must be saved and not only saved they will be saved added to the church and established in righteousness in the name of Jesus Lord we pray for these requests Lord right here are humanly speaking impossible situations but lord as i walk upon them they become testimonies as i walk upon them they become testimonies and lord your people will stand to testify in the presence of everyone healings and miracles and breakthroughs and salvations and restorations in the name of the lord jesus christ now, those of you who are making this decision for Jesus Christ, I love you from the depth of my heart and I thank you for coming out to accept Jesus Christ. It's a very noble decision. Hallelujah. There's no need to feel as if you are going to hellfire. It's an exciting thing because it looks natural, but it is supernatural in every way. Lift your right hand and say this after me. I'm just guiding you, but it's, it's, it's the truth from your heart that really sets you free say lord jesus i love you with all my heart some of you as you are praying you will literally feel things leaving you as you are praying jesus said i am the way the truth and i am the life say after me again lord jesus i believe in you and i love you with all my heart i accept that i cannot help myself and i ask you tonight save me cleanse me in the name of Jesus everything in me that is not from you I command to leave me right now I declare that I have eternal life in my spirit I'm a child of God my goodness I sense such heavy anointing of the Holy Spirit even just right here in the altar right here I'm sensing that there is such a strong anointing ministering to people ministering to people something is entering you in the name of the lord jesus christ those who are getting born again as you are getting born again some of you are getting filled with the holy ghost instantly 
instantly because I see the power of God coming on some of you in the name of Jesus. Say after me from today, I'm a child of God. The life of God is in me. I will never be the same in the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. May you become mighty men and women of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. May God do great and mighty things in and through your life. I really pray for you from the depth of my heart. May you never go back to the systems of this world again. May the Holy Spirit guide you. May he instruct you and teach you in the name of Jesus Christ. May you be established in righteousness. In Jesus' name I pray. May God bless you. I'd like you to follow the lady waving her hands. She will have your details and I promise that we'll send you a text and we'll follow you up. May God bless you. In Jesus' name, follow the lady very quickly. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please, everyone stand. Everyone stand. I want to speak over your life now and please, I want you to pay attention. Those outside, this is when everybody gets to receive something mighty upon their lives. I believe in the power of prophecy. I believe in its ability to change the course of your life. Please, let's prepare the announcement quickly so that we can take it afterwards. We have seen in this house what God has done with prophecy. When Pastor Alpha came up here, he was admonishing us and he told us, he said, you don't just believe in the Lord, but you believe in the prophets that he has put. This is not human worship. It's an election of grace. God sends men and anoints them with apostolic and, and prophetic mantles and graces because he wants to use the words through them to step into your life and destiny there will be radical change as I, pre I prophesy over your life lift your hands Jesus. inside and outside lift your hands the power of God is strong I already feel like fire on my hands I speak over your life a dimension of speed you have never seen a dimension of speed you have never seen receive it right now in the name of Jesus Christ receive it right now in the name of Jesus inside and outside let a mantle come on you for supernatural speed in the name of Jesus I pray for you every spiritual blindness everything covering your eyes from accessing insight in the Word of God you need insight your life is at the mercy of the spiritual insight you have I'm praying for you like a veil torn from a man's eyes I command that veil to be torn right now I command that veil to be torn right now I command that veil to be torn right now. I speak against the spirit of limitation. That force from hell. It allows you to move forward, but it will say you will not cross this border. In the name that is above all names. I come under this anointing this night. And I command whatever limit you have seen in your life, I break it tonight. I break that limit tonight in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus every strange dream every spiritual encounter of the night that is not orchestrated from heaven every visitation of demons they appear as animals they appear as men as women they appear as all kinds of things seeing yourself in primary school wearing all kinds of things i don't care what it is in the name that is above all names i command judgment upon those spirits now i command judgment upon those spirits now every voice that calls you forth in your sleep and programs tragedy over your destiny the bible was not it didn't leave us in darkness 
as to what happens when men sleep i pray whatever calls you forth and your sleep and reprograms your destiny so that you wake up into tragedies by the blood of jesus i attack those enchanters i challenge their enchantment in the name of jesus christ i pray for you prosperity like you have never seen a dimension of wealth like you have never seen receive it in the name of jesus i pray upon you the same way favor can come on a man like a mantle you can carry it you can know you are carrying help that guy please see this will come on people seriously this ministry has enjoyed a level of inexplainable favor i'm praying for you from that which has come upon this ministry let it come upon your life right now i release that favor in the name of jesus receive it receive it receive it receive it receive it receive it receive that favor receive that favor hallelujah i pray for you and Jabez was more honorable listen honor is not just age honor is a mantle god can is a distinguishing anointing that sets you apart and men not only recognize your difference but they celebrate it i'm praying for you in the name of jesus christ from today an unction comes upon you a strange grace that makes men to celebrate who you are and what you carry believe me when i say this i pray for you inside and outside from the depth of my spirit that mantle of honor that distinguishing anointing receive it in the name of jesus i pray for your families every project that has refused to be completed i don't care what it is the bible says the hand of zerubbabel that began this work that same hand will complete it i'm praying for you whatever has experienced stagnancy in your family i supply spirit power and i command it to start moving forward in the name of jesus christ every uncompleted project hear the word of the lord tonight i command you to be completed in the name of jesus i've said it again and again that the next level of your life is a destiny help my way listen listen i have seen in my life and i have enjoyed the strange ministry of destiny helpers brothers and sisters god does not need 20 people to change your life one correct person can just step into your life there was a man who some friends insisted he must be healed they carried him and tossed somebody's zinc and brought him to those are not friends they are destiny helpers my god in the name of jesus i don't know where they are who must appear in your life between now and february but in the name that is above all names i speak to the north i speak to the south i speak to the east i speak to the west destiny help us come forth now come forth now financial help us come forth now marital help us come forth now academic help us come forth now career help us come forth now if there are no human beings to occupy that position angels must appear in human bodies and perform that role i pray for you the lord told us this year is a year of multiplied grace and influence i want you to go back and meditate on it you already see what is happening in the house the house has entered another dimension and everybody who cares has entered that dimension i pray for you i don't know what level of grace you have been functioning in but i pray 
listen to what I'm about to tell you in the name of Jesus whatever dimension of grace you have seen right now I stand under this apostolic anointing I multiply that grace upon your life I multiply that grace I multiply that healing power I multiply that deliverance power I multiply that grace for favor I multiply that teaching anointing I multiply your influence where you could not have gone by now I pray by the wings of the spirit may you be carried to strange dimensions of influence where your business has not gotten to where your certificate could not have entered in the name of Jesus I expand your spiritual borders and I compel influence in your life in the name of Jesus Christ when you open your mouth to call for help I force your words to enter the ears of an helper in the name of Jesus Christ I say it again koinonia that if you dare open your mouth to cry for help I declare may that word not die till it enters the ears of your helper I speak to the elements of creation I compel them to come in alignment with your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ I use the earth as a point of contact every human being walks on the earth I speak that anywhere the earth sees you let it compel favor for you some of you may not understand what I'm doing just believe me Job said for out of the earth comes bread I command the bread that is buried for your destiny in the earth I call it out in the name of Jesus Christ I don't know the desires of your heart but I'm praying that between now and the next miracle service that you will come and stand before the people of God and testify to the might of God everything that has brought tears out of your family I judge it right now every career person listen to me we are forcing promotion this year don't say it cannot happen you will fool yourself are you hearing what I'm saying look in the name that is above all names the mystery of lifting may it come upon your life every student here your CGPA has ears and I want to speak to it in the name you had the testimony of that gentleman he didn't even complete the testimony he sent me the text he was praying for 0.11 and that's exactly what he got 0.11 and it brought him to 3.50 I pray for you in the name of Jesus especially for those who are just starting 100 level you will start with a mysterious GPA that will shock people I pray for those who have tried and tried but your academics is just hooking you you have done all you know to do I bail you out of it this night in the name of Jesus Christ I bail you out of it this night in the name of Jesus Christ finally I pray for you I must pray for your spiritual life encounters that you have never had Listen, you need encounters in your life you need encounters you hear people like Bishop Oedeko mention encounters and what he transmitted in them I pray strange encounters with the spirit of God with the word of God that will launch your destiny to another dimension receive it in the name of Jesus nothing dies in your hands I say it again nothing dies in your hands those who came from far I prophesy to you you left all and paid the price to come carry an unction that will shock all that know you in the name of Jesus Christ you will go back to your campuses you will go back to your job you will go back to your homes with a mysterious anointing that will distinguish you 
in the name of Jesus Christ I bless you by the power of the Holy Ghost I declare that the miracles begin in your life in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen give Jesus a clap of praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please keep standing. Just give me a minute or two and then we're done very quickly. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.